Hello, and uh, welcome to the Fans Museum. Uh, we're here recording a podcast with the International Fans Day. On my right is uh, Craig. How are you doing, Craig? You all right? Very well. I'm very happy to be here. It's a very special occasion, and hopefully over the course of the next hour or so, we'll get to hear a wide variety of why people are so in love with Sunderland Football Club. So it's, uh, it's going to be a good night. There's always got to be a solid reason as to why they start supporting something, because it's not for the glory, is it? Well, no. People like me and you were, were born into it, forced into it. Yeah, we didn't we're, have that choice. Which I, no, which I'm now doing with my children, but it's, it's... I feel sorry for Evelyn. Well, yeah, but it's going to be a, a really good night to hear the love that everyone has for this club and, and why people have travelled so far for such a special occasion, for something that hopefully can become a regular occurrence. And let's hope this time next year we'll be doing this in the Championship. I think... We're pretty much the only club, especially in the third tier, that could have 130 different fan groups or how many... We're the only club that can have people from as far from yeah. as, what, New Zealand, Philadelphia, Holland, so, uh, like, everywhere. Like, I, I've never known that many third tier clubs have that level of support, or even mid-table premiership clubs. No, it's, a, it's absolutely incredible, and I think, in truth, it's something that us as local fans perhaps often take for granted, it's just how much it means just to go to the match how many times yeah. we've clicked through the turnstile at the stadium of light and that is something that we perhaps don't fully appreciate at times and it's incredible to think that as we've mentioned someone from philadelphia who we are about to introduce has travel all of this way for for a league one fixture that some people like i said perhaps don't fully appreciate just how much it means yeah so it's um it's going to be a good night but coming all the way from philadelphia we've got john and joanne here who's john it was your idea originally we'll introduce you just now but tell me you know why it became your idea and, and the process of it i suppose well thank you uh, both for having me i, I really appreciate that it, it's it's an honor to be here it's an honor to be at a sunderland match this sort of came to my mind after the the playoff loss last year um i'm i have to do a lot of my following from afar social media sites and people were just kind of down and they weren't where they needed to be and i started yeah. thinking about why i come to matches i've been over now for a few years and I realize that it's more about the relationship sometimes for me than it is about the actual match because players Absolutely. come and go, managers come and go, but Joanne has you know, been there and she's a nice person. And I try to think back what made me feel like a great Sunderland fan and it was the people. And I thought to myself, why can't we have a big family reunion? Yeah. Reunion from people from all over the world. And this all sort of started, I was sort of quasi adopted by the Ellington and District Branch a few years ago because of my surname. Yeah. Great people. And they take me into the fold and I'm like a, a family member to them. And I meet Joanne and she treats me like family. And I thought to myself, everybody's kind of down in the dumps. Let's make some sort of positive family reunion. And an email to Chris Waters, Joanne and BLC and here we are. It's crazy how it can happen as well. There's not many clubs like Sunderland where you could have, I don't want to be disrespectful to any clubs, I won't name one, but again, I'll go back to the fact that in the, the third tier, there's not that many, there's not, in the premiership, there's not many clubs you could go, I've got this idea and so many people would turn up. You can't have a family reunion without a really big ass family. You know that's what a, I mean? That's, that's a, to have a voice yeah. from some idiot from America, to have a voice <laughs> where people would listen to me. And, and treat me with, again, dignity and respect. It's, it's something very, very special. And I think you made the comment, you're week in and week out, you don't, maybe you don't appreciate it, but being an outsider, I'm absolutely blown away by the club and the fan base. I, I can't even describe in words how blown away I am. As an event, I think this has, you know, been well documented, it's, it's been well publicized, the club have done everything they can to get everybody involved. And I, I, again, like I mentioned beforehand, I mean, to have so many people come from so many different countries travel so far, it, it is such a testament to everyone involved. And it is just an absolutely mind blowing idea that, I mean, like yourself, you've traveled all the way over from Philadelphia for, for again, just, just a few days, really. And we've, we've mentioned, obviously, about there's not many clubs that could do this. I'll be 100% no. honest. I don't think any club could do this. The fans really are the, the lifeblood here. And to walk around this building, We've been here a good few times now, but hear so many different accents and, and hear so many stories and see so many smiles on the faces. It goes back to what you said, John. It's quite often not about the football. It's about the, the day itself. And I think when you summed it up about the playoff loss, I'll be open and honest. I'm 31 years old. I don't get upset by much, but Graham will vouch for this. And as well as girlfriend who stood over there, I cried my eyes out. That was a big cry. I, yeah, honest to God, I cry. sobbed like a baby when Charlton scored that winner. 
But one thing that I've heard highlighted on the way out of Wembley is just still how much this club means. You can't, you know, kind yeah. of walk away or turn your back on this football club. So And there's been so many opportunities where you could have done. Like, oh, let's be absolutely. honest, any, any reasonable, yeah. right-minded person would have walked out on this club a long, long, long time ago. But, and I mean, we've got the highlights of certain games on the telly just now. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, some of the games I'm watching, and I'm remembering the goals and I can describe them. I've got one of those really weird memories like that. But I'll tell you what I remember more what I did afterwards, yeah. who I was with, how I celebrated it. And I think if there's one thing anyone said, you know, why do you love Sunderland? Me, myself, would always be the fan base. And that's just not like Southwick and where I was born. It's like, you know, as far flung as Philadelphia, are all very much as one. It's so nice to have everyone here that feel exactly the same. But Joanne, obviously, I wanted to bring you in as well because I haven't known for quite a while. You've been getting this plan and stuff like that. But um, obviously, John's idea. But how do, you, how do you take an idea like that and make it into reality I suppose so he firstly took it to our BLC meeting chatted to the rest of the branch leaders and said you know what um, even if we get 20 20 people that come over for one game we'll not have a, we'll not have a few beers maybe um, a yeah few. okay <laughs> <I can't laughs> <stress. laughs> it's going to be a lot yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you yeah. so we took it from there really and then we um, spoke to the club and said we're thinking of doing this any chance you can support us so you know and they were just marvellous and I mean, you're talking about not many clubs can do this. We've got an amazing set of fans who took this in their heart and went round with it. We've also got a club who done it, even the owner as well, you know. Um, so they put the liaison team, Chris, Jamie, they're all, I mean, they've been meeting fortnightly as it's coming up to it, you know, to, to organise this. But, um, so it went from just one game to maybe a few beers to a three day itinerary with action packed stuff from 20 people to 150 people coming from Taiwan from Bulgaria, Italy, Philadelphia, you name it. It's just marvellous, unreal. It's been brilliant as well because, I mean, and again, it's another thing I maybe take for granted, and I was speaking to our last just beforehand. I was sitting having just a beer, and behind me, Bobby Kerr's just sat there, and I've been lucky enough to be in the company of Sunderland's FA Cup winning captain once or twice. But then when you think of people who are so far flung and Bobby Kerr's just standing behind you, mm. but the reason he's still here, and he's, he's not Sunderland born, and obviously I know we adopted him because he, he did all right, let's be honest, but he, the reason he's probably still here is not because he won the FA Cup, probably because the fact that he won the FA Cup made him so loved and welcomed in this area, and the fact that he's still here and just hanging out with people, it's just like, it's, really it's ridiculous when you think about it, yeah. Next door, yeah. It's like, and for I these guys imagine. who's come uh, thousands of miles yeah. watching them around the stadium today, pressing that button and going down the tunnel was yeah. unreal. You know, and you suddenly think, yeah, I take it so much for granted every yeah. Saturday or every fortnight when I'm coming here morning because it's yeah. cold. It's not always about the results with something, and thank no. God, thank God it's not. I think, um, I think one of the, the important things that we can perhaps look at this as a whole and again, just kind of going back to what Joanne said there about you know, the level of support that the club and, and everybody's given evolved, fair for Jamie, fair for Chris, uh, some, some fantastic members of staff and even going as far as, you know, Stuart's, uh, his involvement and obviously the promotional side of it. I think it's important just to touch on regardless of people's thoughts about, you know, the off-field yeah. politics around the club at the moment, you know, things like that can be can be certainly put to one side regardless of whatever your feelings are whatever your your agendas are for example the most important thing is that everybody's here for the love of that football club exactly, I agree. and tomorrow yeah. what we want is we want 30,000 people who will get behind that side from the off and we've seen in recent weeks when it's like when we get behind a team and we raw them on you know away teams they crumble they can't cope with that so and that, that's an important thing touching on what you were saying about the club and stuff like that as well i think one big thing for me one thing I can say that's fantastic about Sunderland Football Club as a whole, away from the fans, is the infrastructure of people that are in the club as well, like Chris Waters and Jimmy Loader. I mean, Jimmy's very, very new, and I've known Jimmy for a fairly long time. I can't begin to tell you how helpful Jimmy was the other week when it came to the German Black Cats came over for a certain game. I wanted to get a camera so I could film the day that they had and do a little bit of a video because it was just a good experience for me and it was nice to document their day. And he went above and beyond on about this first week in the job to make sure that I could take in the camera make sure I could fill in the day. He retweeted the video. He made sure people could see it. No matter what people think about certain parts of the inside of the club, be it positive or negative, mm. we do have to 90%, in fact, of fantastic people like Chris and like Jamie that work within that club. Along those lines, I met Jamie for the first time today uh, on the tour, and he's a member of the Ellington and District branch. So yeah. that's his home branch. Yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that they all took off, came out after work last night in Morpeth. That's where we stayed. And guess where I spent my Thursday evening? They're, they had to come home from work. Yeah. And they took me out for 
drinks and a good time. And I thought, where else in the world would 20 people that I barely know take the time after work? They had families, kids, and things to see, to just welcome me to yeah. the area. And that's, yeah. that is unbelievable. And there's, there's sometimes so much stuff said about Sunderland people, not Sunderland fans. And I think really moments and times like this really shows how great of people we are. I'll openly admit, I've had a couple of gins, awesome. but I love Sunderland. Um, it's very much because of the people. But we've been joined by someone I, I equally love as well. We've got Kath on board, who's also, I would say, almost half and half. You've sort of joined in together with Joanne. But Kath, first and foremost, how are you? Are you all right? I'm fine, thank you very much. Yeah. Good. How's, um, I think everyone's turning up. I've noticed that the room's getting either drunker or bigger. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just going to be like a walk on, walk off, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe a little bit like a live radio on station off, on here, which bring guests on, bring guests off. But Kath, We've, spoke, we've asked Joanne about how the idea blossomed and we've spoken an awful lot about how there's only really something that could have this blossoming idea and turn it into something so huge and fun. But talk us through a little bit how the plan was for you and when you first heard the idea and why you took it on board. It was actually John Ellington who got in touch with us to say, um, what do you think about this idea of having it national fans? And we thought, if we can get 20 people there, absolutely brilliant. So 20 people, got 150 people from 19 different countries coming along. Yeah. Far more than we ever imagined. When he came to us, he said, no, we love the idea. Joanne and I are both bit control freaks. We had this all planned in my head, what we wanted to do, how we could see it, the vision and what we wanted. Um, went to the club and said, look, we've been approached. This is what we would like to do for the weekend. Um, in fairness, Stuart had said to us, that's great. How much do you want from me? What is it? We said, do you want a penny? It's just a day where it's going to be a weekend. We've already been in touch with Michael. We're going to have a fan spot on Friday night and talk through what we wanted. And we're absolutely fine. We'll back you whatever you want. Um, and then they came up with suggestions. Because I said, the only thing we want is a tour. And the whole thing just escalated from there, really. Yeah. If we just touch on John, who will inevitably come back as well, of course. It's the first time that I've met him this evening. And I think what we can both agree on is, is just how humble a man he is, oh, by the way. Yeah, I mean, as you is. said, we're looking at bringing 20 people over and 20 people are somehow <laughs> turned into over 100 from so many different countries. What an amazing, an, an amazing and an ambitious idea just to, to say, actually, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a plan whilst, with all due respect to where we were as a football club, we haven't been doing remarkably well like after we've just lost a third tier playoff final in the yeah. last four seconds he went hang on i reckon i could get some people let's in a have room. a gathering yeah, yeah let's have a gathering yeah, yeah. And, the, and the thing is with, with Sunderland as well i know we've spoke before about there's not many clubs that could do this and i think off the top of my head let's let try and name five clubs i think that could get 130 branches in 19 different countries in a room man united level of success at man united huge liverpool maybe rangers maybe celtic but you look at the success of teams like that that could maybe do something similar and you look at Sunderland and our success and you think bloody hell like well, how did we quite manage to do that with our level of let's be honest the amount of times you could turn away from this club I've said before 15 point seasons 19 point seasons last four seconds losing the playoff final and yet somehow us a bunch of idiots well, want to get into a room <laughs> to chat about Sunderland and watch Sunderland goals on TV and chat more about Sunderland go see Sunderland Joanne and I were both in London on Wednesday, an event. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking to people from Liverpool, from Spurs, loads of different clubs there, um, from Newcastle. We made some links in there. <laughs> the, the worst thing was they arranged a derby, so it was um, tabletop football, Joanne and I against Newcastle. Did you win? No, we didn't. We'll edit this bit Should out. Just smashed yeah, the, we'll should have just smashed the table, though, Kat? They were cheating. <laughs> like, they were cheating of course they were cheating. Yeah. There was spinning, there was cheating. There's right. part of me that makes me feel I like would be unhappy that you hadn't spent enough on the tabletop football <laughs> and they probably blame the owner of the venue itself <laughs> that they only just won one or two games. Yeah. I know, um, it wasn't right. But we were talking to are, them and telling them about, because we're saying, oh, we've got a busy week, we're here today, we've got International Fans Day at the weekend. Like, International Fans Day, what's that? So we're telling them what it was. And we're saying this started off as having International Fans Day to a full weekend. Yeah. You know, if we've had the tour this afternoon, met up, we've come here for the party tonight. We're meeting tomorrow, we've got the match. Sunday we're meeting up again, you know. And we said there's all sorts going on. And we're like, 
what, how have you arranged it? We explained, we said, you know, we've got people coming from 19 different countries and Spurs and that were just amazed thinking, how do you get and that? You know, we're talking Spurs. Yeah. yeah. I think there is always an interest in Sunderland, though, in terms of, there you mentioned is. that you support Sunderland and, and everybody wants to hear your story. White everybody cash. has a story about what they think is going on at the football club. Everybody's got a story of how they think, you know, that you differentiate from Newcastle. Do you know yeah. what? Do you know why you called Mackhams? You always tend to get that one an awful lot, and you're like, "No, I've never heard this one. Tell me." But it, it is it's, it's incredible. Tell me with knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Tell me I've something I've never, been never told heard before ever by it. But the most, um, <laughs> like I said, the, the most amazing thing that you'll you'll always hear in respect of every, everybody who always comes back to these stories is you're still getting over thirty thousand in League One. Uh, let's face it, we've got some who travelled just under six thousand miles to be here. So what sort of idiot travels? <laughs> You what know. sort of medication are you on? <laughs> yeah. He's travelled 5,988 miles apparently to get here. Mm-hmm. But it's it's one of those things, it's the old Niall Quinn quote of, you know, how it's got under the skin. And, uh-huh. yep. and obviously for at least the rest of the night, the rest of the podcast, you know, you'll hear an assortment of stories of how people have... Probably far more interesting than ours. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> probably, yeah. We'll, we'll hear an awful lot about how people have, you know, come to love the football club. We'll hear about the, the journeys and the travels, but at least for the moment, um, we have to extend a thank you to you and we have yeah. to extend a thank you to to John and and, and, and be, everybody else who's... Everyone that's ever had any involvement in it because for me, it's a good night out, good chance to meet people from ta- Taiwan um, <laughs> yeah. to like chat about Sunland and why they like Sunland. Um, but yeah there'll be more stories to come but as it stands thanks very much Kath thank you very much thanks John who's disappeared somewhere Uh, thanks to Joanne as always busy body she doesn't last very long in many places and um, I suppose I've got to say thanks to you Chapman as well haven't I at some point I'll be back at some stage I would expect but uh, I'll consider coming back I'll think about it (laughs) alright welcome back you're not listening to Graham and Craig anymore you're listening to Gavin Tom Albrighton who's a little bit nervous for some reason he's had two or three pints I'm all right. I just wanted we're to see you. Having a good time here in the fan museum. We're joined by Stephen, who's made the trip over from uh, Taiwan, I believe. Yes, indeed. Yes. So, what was good that evening. like? What was the journey like? Oh my goodness! It's about 28 hours in total. So door to door. God. So it's a long trip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're here for how long? Uh, eight days. So it's a short trip for it the is, amount. Of, yeah, for the amount you've travelled. Eight days. We got two games in, and really that was the one of the main reasons for picking. You know this particular week yeah. because we had two home games back to back so so that so that makes it a bit easier yeah so obviously people listening will be able to pick up you're not actually from taiwan originally so what what took you to that part of the world oh so that's quite a story so originally, <laughs> originally i'm from chesley street i moved to nottingham for university and you know stayed there for a few years so you know when i was sort of my main supporting years you know after i moved out of the area were originally nottingham so then I'd, you know, I'd do the commute up and down the A1 on a, on a Saturday. And then about 20 years ago, I actually moved to California for all work, right. you know, for, for, for all for work. So California is still home for us. But um, with my job, we moved temporarily to Taiwan. So four years into Taiwan um, and, you know, loving it out there. Is it, so California or Taiwan, what, what, what wins for talking about, you know, place to live? I mean, it's all about work, right? Or Sunland. Um, Would you rather be back home? Of course. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's great to be able to come back. Just hoping we leave with six points on uh, on this trip. That would that would make a that would make for a nice trip. You see, you can tell you've been away for a little while, because hoping that we're going to get six points in two games is <laughs> <laughs> it's incredibly ambitious. Tell you're on holiday. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's, it's always the hope, you know. It's yeah. always the hope. Well, it's right? the hope that kills you, isn't it? It is. So. It is. As I've just been talking off earlier there, I mean, I live four miles away. It's easy for me to get to a match because, obviously, um, <laughs> I'm around the corner. So, you know, I get picked up on the morning, we go at the pub for a few beers. It's just what I do. But for right. people like yourself, right. for the distance that you travel, so how, how often do you actually get back for probably, games? Probably once every couple of years now. So, um, when I first moved to California, I was back at least, you know, at least once a year. Um, and I think I went three seasons in a row and I did not see a winning game when I came back. God, don't um, see that. So I'll tell you, that, <laughs> that, makes, that makes for a long trip home when you're going yeah. back. You know, you come in for the starting game of the season and you lose 1-0 to Everton and you think, ah, oh, really? Coming back 
like for two hours from a nil nil against Bolton's bad enough. So I couldn't yeah. imagine like <laughs> 14, 15 hours travelling. That was just that yeah. would be sick. But it's the social aspect, right? I mean, that's what this whole event's all about. I mean, that's why International Fans Day. You know, it was John Ellington's idea. You know, Kath Reed and Joanne Youngson have yeah, been yeah. fantastic. <laughs> you know, Chris and James in the club. Yeah. Um, and then I've kind of helped out a bit in the background there. Um, and it was really all about the social aspect of, you know, social media is great for, for, a, for a club like Sunderland because yeah. you can connect with people without mm. actually ever meeting them. And now we've got the extra, you know, benefit that we actually get to, you know, come out and meet people. Yeah. And I've actually got people come up to me saying, oh, you're Stephen Coates. And it's only <laughs> because they know, you know, because of the stuff we've been posting up on, we, on social actually, media. We've actually found because with what we do, regardless of where you are in the world, we're accessible. So, I mean, our podcasts, our website, you, it doesn't matter where you are. You, you, you can read it, you can listen to it, you can right. hear what we've got to say. So, Sweet plug, bro. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my, my point is, is that when, when it comes to what we do, we, we get so much feedback. And we don't, I, I actually, I, w I would surmise that at least half of the people who read our website and listen to our podcast aren't actually from Sunderland or live in Sunderland anymore. Right. They're, they're from all over the world. I, I think that's probably the one good thing about social media in the last 10 years or so is that it's brought so many people who probably felt isolated from Sunderland yes. and, and watching right. games uh, together. And that's sort of why we started our Exiles podcast because we've got people on our team who are from all over the world. Mm. And, and we speak to people every week who are from all over the world. And just knowing how much the club means to these people when they're, when they're so far isolated right. from living in, in, the, in the northeast again um, is amazing. And I mean, so for you, for instance, when I don't even know the time difference <laughs> for Taiwan to, to here, but say Sunderland are playing three o'clock on a Saturday, what's, what does that mean to you? It's 11 p.m. kickoff for us. So, oh, it's not too bad. Um, that's not too bad. The evening kickoffs, 3.45 in the morning. Yeah. And I get on, on a work day, on, on a work, work day, day as well. Do you and get I, up for them as well? Well, I get up for work at, I start work at five. So we'll normally get up and listen to at least the, the, the second half. Right. And if, if I'm awake, of course, we'll get up. But yeah, the, the evening mats, it, matches are killers. They're, that's tough. That's mm. commitment though, that. Like 3.45, I, I think I would do that. It would be difficult going back, <laughs> going into work the next day. Yeah, well, we were talking about that before and uh, I was on holiday yeah. in New Zealand visiting some relatives of my partner and I was seeing how her cousins who are there, they get up like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to watch Airside. I was there for three weeks. I don't think I bothered myself at once on the match. I was just like, I'm not getting out of three o'clock for nothing. Like, it's, like, I love Sunderland, but to base your entire weekend around getting up at three, four in the morning or staying up till 11, 12, like, no matter how tired you are, just to it's, watch them is like... It's, it's crazy. But I mean, the advantage now with the, S, with the SAFC, you know, um, broadcast, and now they've tied it in with you know, with Nick and Gary's um, commentary. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, and that's great. I mean, previously what we had to do was we had to, we had to log into both and then and try and... Play them and, and then line them up. Yeah, yeah and it was, it was almost impossible. So that, you know, that helps a lot. But this is my wife's first time to the Stadium of Light. And I, she said, wow, she said, I'm not going to have Nick and Gary's commentary <laughs> to... Uh, you know, to, so to, has she ever been to a Sunderland game or is, is this her first game? So first real game, we went to two friendlies right. um, when we played in Sacramento um, a few years ago. And is your but, wife, is your, I'm presuming your wife's American then, is she? Um, so she's, she's actually Vietnamese oh, American. Right. So um, you, and you've indoctrinated her and she's, have, she's now a Macram. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all well, about. It well, is. Woman, Spreading yeah. the message well, across the world. You know, we did the stadium tour today as part of the, the, the Fans Day weekend. Right. And she said, she, you know, she walked out into the stadium and it was just... The sun was blazing, the light was just perfect. And it always, I mean, the hairs always stand up on the back of my neck when I walk out there. It's I just, brilliant. I, well, all I hope is, is that, and people listen to this, it'll be after the, after the matter, but I just hope that with so many people across from all over the world, get to watch Sunland tomorrow. They don't do a Sunland <laughs> <laughs> and, they don't, and they don't balls it up. For the effort shown, I mean, I, I say this all the time, there's no fans like Sunland fans. I know, I know that, that every fan of every true. club loves that club, but I just think the effort that fans like yourself will go to just even get here to watch a game yeah. is amazing. And I mean, I'd like to think if I was in that situation, I'd do the same thing. I couldn't make any promises. But, <laughs> <laughs> but just, just one final point is, sure. is whenever you go all over the world, and you know, it's a question worldwide, isn't it? oh, who do you support, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. 
What's the general reaction over in Taiwan or when you've been in California when you go, I am a Sunderland fan, is it? What a ridicule that people turn the nose at war. Who are they? So if if they know if somebody knows their football, you know, if they if they've watched a bit of football, yeah. they'll know that they'll know who Sunderland is. You know, if they don't know their football, they'll know their geography, but then of course you gotta say you're from the nearby the yeah. other team up the road yeah. <laughs> um, but then I'll just spend the time and kind of explain and you know it's it's easy it's easy to get people converted over but I tell you what you know we, we've we've now got an official branch you know recognized branch in Taiwan what, what's the what's the full name um, it's the Taiwan it's, it's just the, the Taiwan branch right cool. Taiwan supporters branch that That's is easy. that is our set and sweet plug of this and here we are, <laughs> do, we are smashing this out of the park um, and we've got two members so far and I tell you I found it really hard to try and get Sunderland fans to step up in Taiwan and I think they're all waiting for the club to do a bit better yeah um, so this year I'm determined to try and get you know a, a bigger membership yeah. just don't show them something until I die that's <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll have that adverse effect I assume <laughs> well uh, thank you very much for, for joining us and thank we'll you. let you get back to your beer or yeah. I think it's a Copperberg hopefully, oh, hopefully, hopefully the night them. carries on as it's going right now because I've, I've had a couple and it's yeah, we're flowing, we're flowing. I think it's going to be flowing well. Get away, lads. Fantastic, thank you very much. Cheers, thanks. Yeah, here we are at the Fan Museum. Johnny from Rooker Report, joined by Niall. <laughs> also from Rooker Report. Yes, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, yes. But yeah. And um, we're here joined by Martin, who is from Sweden. Hello, Martin. Hello, hello. Interesting how you became a Sunderland fan, am I right? Was it your dad listened to the radio yeah that's correct my, my dad is from the far north of Sweden and when he was a kid back in the 50s he started listening to the shortwave radio uh, and then he started following Sunderland so I kind of grew up as a Sunderland supporter although I live in Sweden uh, the first time I came to Sunderland was like 10 years ago actually you remember what your first game was uh, my first game was a Newcastle game and we lost it Oh no, what a way to start, what a way to start, so that was 10 years ago? Yeah, roughly. So, so. I'm guessing that was Ryan Taylor scored the winning goal yeah. in that game, I'm f if, if the calculations are correct. Alright, so have you got a Swedish team as well, Martin, that you follow in? Not, not really, actually. No. Well, well there, there is, if I, if I have to choose one uh, team in Sweden, it's uh, Djurgården. Okay. It's a Stockholm team. It's okay. um, one of two or three Stockholm teams. That's really good. So. Okay. I remember when uh, Sunderland played uh, Man United up here, and it was Larsson and yeah. Ibrahimovic on both sides. Oh yeah. And there was a massive uh, group of Swedish fans coming to see them. Larsson got sent off in that game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was great to come all the way to see him, and he gets sent off. Um, <laughs> but is uh, I guess he must be one of the players you keep an eye on. Yeah, lot, obviously Larsson and uh, I mean we had a, quite a few Swedish players here in Sunderland. Yes. So Stefan Schwartz was a big favorite of mine mm -hmm. as well. Ola Tyvenen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he played for us for yeah. first. Didn't really do much, but <laughs> he, he was at the club. I didn't remember much of what he'd done, but I remember him being here. You know, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, so since you started listening on the radio, can you remember when you were listening when you were younger? Which players you enjoyed listening to? Player. Obviously, um, uh, great uh, Kevin Phillips, Quinn. Mm -hmm. I kind of liked uh, Nosworthy. <laughs> now, now <you're> on. <laughs> for, some, for some strange reason. <laughs> Everybody loves Nosworthy. Yes. Everybody loves him. I don't know why. He, don't get us wrong, he was fantastic for us. Yeah. He, was, he was a good player. But yeah. I think everybody loves him beyond the fact he was a good player. Yeah. I think people just love Nairon. So <laughs> I get that. I get it. We all <laughs> feel the same. I actually uh, named the server at the work after him, so no, 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 nobody at the, the company knows why it's called Nosworthy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Nosworthy oh, 7. Uh, uh, Nosworthy Vista. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. I love that. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm over the room by that. I don't know where we can uh, top that, really. Uh, that's, that's, uh, fantastic. So have you come all the way from Sweden for this event, or did you...? Yes, I yes. did, yeah. Was it difficult to get to Sunderland from Sweden? No, it's it's not that hard. I mean, we, we don't have any direct flights, so I go via yeah, Amsterdam. Newcastle so. like to tell us we don't have an airport. Uh, yeah. That's one of the... <laughs> have we not they've, got an they've airport? Told, they've told me that a lot on Twitter, yeah. because <laughs> I, I, uh, I actually wrote uh, that I, on my uh, trip to Sunderland or something like that. <laughs> 
so <laughs> yeah. yesterday. So I've seen it a lot now. After yes. every derby result, oh, we'll beat you today. Well, so you must be going to tomorrow's game as well, are you? Yeah. Excited? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should um, be good. We're doing all right at the moment. Yeah, I so. think. Um, what do you think will happen tomorrow? Do you think we'll get the get the win? Or yeah, I think we'll get the win. Get the yeah. win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Nice to hear. Very confident. Very confident <laughs> fan. I love it. Uh, Julius, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming all the way from Sweden yep. to see Thank us you. here. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank, Thank you. Hello and welcome back. I'm Ant and we're with Sam. You right, Sam? Yeah, how are you doing? And we're joined by a Bulgarian Sunderland supporter with Rolado. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh, did you have yeah. a nice journey over? Oh, yeah. It was a long journey, but it was uh, nice and we're here. So <laughs> Excellent. Are you, looking for, are you coming for the game tomorrow? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, we'll be here for tomorrow game we are five Bulgarians. Do you think Sunderland will win? You'll go home happy? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Three so, points in the back, I'm sure. Yeah, well, fingers, we need three points in the back in all fairness. So what made you support Sunderland then? Well, maybe it's the fifth time today I'm asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a long story, but uh, 21 years ago, I was uh, 12 years old and uh, uh, at that time, I heard for Sunder about Sunderland for the first time and we were at uh, the old first division mm -hmm. and I was impressed with the, uh, the run we had, uh, uh, record-breaking season, 105 points. And then I read uh, the history of Sunderland. It was, I was so impressed with yeah. uh, the rich history and everything. Uh, then. Uh, I said I need to see some game of uh, this team and the first game I watched was against uh, the rivals uh, Newcastle. Against Newcastle? Yeah. yeah. Can it you remember the game? Yeah, the game under the rain. <laughs> the was... game in the rain? At, at St. James's Park? Yeah, at St. Yeah. St. James's Park. Oh, excellent. Yeah. excellent. That was the uh, Niall Quinn and Phillips. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think anyone who was kind of interested in Sunderland at the time would have been hooked by that game. Yeah. Because it was literally in the, in the rain. We were getting so beat, much and then the drop shearers in there and all that. So Even was, I remember that one. You remember <laughs> that one? I've Excellent. Seen highlights of that one. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So going all the way back from like your Sunderland days, who's been your favourite player? It's yeah. definitely Kevin Phillips. Definitely Kevin Phillips. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And um, how many games have you been to? Do you try and come often, uh, once a season? Well, or? I try to uh, visit two, three, four games a season. Yeah. Yeah. Last year I attend uh, four games. Did we win any? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Did we win any or were they all 1-1 one, one draws? No. Because we, we drew 1-1 one, one a lot last season. So. I was at uh, Charlton game at the Valley. Oh, all right, yes. Yeah, 1-1. One, one. That was 1-1. One, one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then uh, check a trade uh, final. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> then <laughs> the playoff final with... <laughs> ah, the less said about that one, the yeah, better. One, Let's one skip one that one. <laughs> it was 1-1 one, one at one point. Yeah, in September uh, I was at Bolton, and again it was 1-1. One, one. One. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen us win? <laughs> no, no, I, I have seen us win two times against Newcastle. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. all that matters. That's Here at home. And what would be your favourite game? The, fa the one you've been, you've, you know, you, as you say, it's a long way to travel, you know, you've been knackered, you know, and then you, you've gone to a game and you thought, that's the one. Yeah, well, I would say uh, the game against Newcastle in 2008, the free kick, yeah. Keanu Richardson. Keanu Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that that was my first game I attended, and that well, was your first one. I was blown up. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, fantastic. You came for a derby. You got hooked in, obviously, the, the city as well of Sunderland. Do you stay yeah, in Sunderland as the well? The hospitality here is yeah. fantastic. And Great the people. Fan, and the fans and everything like that. I mean, I tip me hat off to you coming all the way from Bulgaria um, to watch that, especially now when we're not great. So for you still to come is absolutely amazing. Uh, I more want and more. You, to be honest. <laughs> more and more. Do, do you think that in a few years' time we'll be back in the Premier League and you'll be coming to watch us play Newcastle again? Yes. I'm yeah. sure we are, we are going to be again in Premier League, hopefully in two, three seasons. But uh, definitely we need some time to get uh, over this period. Uh, we need some investments and uh, yeah, with uh, the capacity of uh, the football club, with the support we have, definitely we'll be back. Yeah. 
Um, so, is Sunderland your main team you follow, or do you have any other teams you you look out for the scores? Any Bulgarian teams? Well, in Bulgaria, I support Levski Sofia. How are they? Are they better than Sunderland are, or are they somehow worse? Well, if I need to compare these two teams, Levski are not the best right. <laughs> at the moment. But so similar to Sunderland. <laughs> maybe similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but last time I visited uh, Levski's game was two or three years ago. So All right. I come here more often. <laughs> And do you go to any other uh, teams around Europe or around the world, or is it just Sunderland and, and Leicester Square? Just Sunderland. Just Sunderland. I'll say just Sunderland. Well, <laughs> wonderful. Well, I, well, like I say, I, I tip me hat. I tip me hat off to you for coming yeah, all this way, and uh, thank you very much for coming. And enjoy the game yeah. tomorrow. Fingers crossed. It's so a pleasure. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, Scav back with uh, Craig. Who you might have heard earlier. Yes. Yeah. What man on the intro? Yeah. There we go. And we're sat with Martin, who's came all the way from Canada. How we doing, Martin? Good, awesome. Good? Yep. How many beers you had? Uh, not enough. Not enough? <laughs> well, after this, we're getting the shots through uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking to people about their, their, their journey. It's not so much about the Sunland. Uh, as we can hear, you can hear someone singing in the background. But it's not so much about the the, uh, the performance on the pitch right now. It's about how you got here. Right. What brings you to Sunland today? Mm -hmm. Because obviously, as people listening will be able to tell, you're not from Sunderland. That's correct, yeah. So how did you become a Sunderland fan? That's what uh, I want to know. Both my parents were born and raised in Pennywell. Oh, um, right. And okay. they emigrated to Canada in 67. They had me a couple of years later. And, probably for uh, the best. Pennywell to Canada. Yeah. It's some genius. <laughs> yeah, so, so they emigrated there. They had me a couple of years later. Um, and it was just sort of bred in my blood. My, my granddad used to always send me clippings of the uh, football echo. Oh, uh, and remember the little pink papers they used to have that used to come out way back in the day? Yeah. So he used to send me little clippings and write me letters every uh, month and, and tell me what's going on with the team. So I just kept following it. And uh, once, obviously, one, I became older and the internet and everything happened, then it made it such e much easier for me to follow. So, so when you were growing up and you were mm -hmm. receiving all of this stuff in the mail, yeah. what was the reaction amongst, say, your friends at, at school and things like that? Because I know football or soccer in, yeah. in, in America and Canada now is, is incredibly popular, but at the time, you know, you saying you're a Sunderland football supporter, what, what was the reaction amongst them? To be perfectly them? honest with you, it really never got brought up, to be no. honest with you. Um, I'm, an, I'm an only child and I played football all the time when I was a kid. I never played hockey, never played baseball, never did any North American sports. When, when you say football, do you mean our football yes, or I mean, football? I know I'm not supposed to say the S word <laughs> over here because apparently I got shunned. So, no, so I, I always played football when I was a kid, and I, I, that's all I did is, is, is play that. I never played any North American sports, never played hockey or anything, not that I have anything against them. I just, I guess with my parents um, having no interest or no knowledge of it when they, being over in Canada, I never got forced into it or, or ne it was never really introduced to it. All my friends played it. Yeah. I just never, I never did. I, I played football, and that's what I wanted to do. So, so did you ever visit Roker Park? My dad says I was there when I was about six or seven. Right. Um, so that's 40 odd years or 43 years, 44 years ago. So right. I really don't remember it, to be perfectly honest with yeah. you. I hate to say it, but I was, I was really, really young when I'm, it happened. I'm like that. But obviously you're here this weekend for the, for the game against Ipswich. Are you here for the Rochdale game as well? I'm actually, it was funny that you say that because back in every year for the last couple of years, I've tried to come over to get three matches. So every year when the fixture list comes out, I look for... Uh, for this at the, at the calendar of the, of the matches and try to see when I get when Sunderland play yeah. two home games and one away game in an eight day span yeah, or seven yeah. day span Saturday Tuesday Saturday two at home one away whatever the combination yeah. may be and when I booked it when I looked at the schedule I saw Ipswich at home Rochdale at home and then Oxford away so I thought that's great I'm going to book that so when I can come over I can see the two home games and go away yeah. and uh, it was it, it happened that I booked it and then after I booked it. Then the international fans they got uh, announced. So it was oh, just so you booked this before that. One hundred percent, I did. Wow. You can ask James Wallace, who's, <laughs> who's a fantastic, um, um, helps me out so much with Sunland, uh, yeah. all my all my uh, plans and everything for tickets and everything. So when I when when I booked it, he says, "Oh, I, there may be something that works for one of those games you're coming to." And I said, "All right, well, I'm coming over anyway, so it makes no difference. I'm coming anyways." <laughs> and then and then it all got announced. I said, "Well, that's just brilliant." That. So when you come over for. You know, events. You've, you've said you, you routinely come over for, for the three-game window. What, what's the general response? I mean, when, when we look at it a night like this, and we've got so many people from so many different backgrounds, it kind of, I suppose, it, it overwhelms me and, and Gav. For we we routinely speak and we kind of touched on it beforehand of perhaps how much we we maybe take this for granted that we'll turn up at the stadium light, we'll we'll walk in and we'll have moans and groans about the way we play. But when we hear you know your story and everybody else who who regularly 
you know, tries to, to come over for, for events like this, and it's, it's such a big occasion. I, I guess the question that, that I'm putting to you is, 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 is how much do you, you kind of buy into this? You know, how, how celebrated are you when you come over? What, what's the general response? Because, you know, we, we don't hear the accent that you have right. routinely. So, yeah. you know, what's the general response when you're, you're walking in the stadium light and people hear your, hear your voice? It's, to be perfectly honest, it's amazing. And I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm standing on a soapbox or chatting or anything like that, um, tooting my own horn. But when, when I come over here and I, and I talk to the people over here and they, they ask me the same question, why are you over here? How are you a Sullen fan? And I tell them, there was, and we start talking about the team and everything, and they, they, they say, it's amazing to hear someone who speaks like you do, who's never lived in, in here. I've lived in Toronto. I lived in 30 miles of Toronto all my life. They said it's amazing for, to, to talk, for us as, to hear someone who ha speaks the way you do, who loves it, the team as much as we do, who have been born and raised here, and is as knowledgeable as best as I can be about what's going on. So every time I come over here, it's, it's amazing. I remember one little story I'll tell you. When I was down at the, uh, when, when we lost to Man City in the cup final, I flew over for that weekend and I, I went back uh, with, my, uh, with my cousin. We went to, uh, to a little bar after the match and I wore my shirt. My cousin took his shirt off and my other cousin took their, their, uh, their, their Sunland colors off. But we went in there and there's a few fans in there with Sunland colors on and we were watching the, the golf and stuff because of timing wise. And a, a guy came up to me, we were standing at the bar and he says, uh, and I said to him, I said, terrible result today. Eh? And he says, where are you from? He didn't even say yes or no. He just said, where are you from? I told him. And he says, you're from Canada. He goes, you came over here for this cup final. This was the Man City Cup final. Went, yeah. And he goes, what are you having? And I ordered my, I said, well, I'm getting it from my cousin. And he goes, don't worry, I'll get it. I'll get it. So he just was amazed that, that I made the journey over to the cup final. I went to the check and trade trophy as well. Unfortunately, my, my uh, North American friends, all the NASA people, Rebecca and Rich and uh, Ken and all those guys and Justin, they always uh, give, me, give me heck because I'm a draw specialist. It seems every time I come over, we draw. So they're, they're not looking forward to the next three games. I think we're Everyone gonna get, we've spoken to tonight said the same thing. <laughs> Every Everybody person. we've spoken yeah. to tonight has said, when I come over, we don't win. So hey, I think may, it's, maybe we just it's don't not, win it's not you, it's them. <laughs> but it's I've not been, you, it's them. I've, like I said, living in Canada, I, I, I've been over for nine to see the to see the lads play nine times, and uh, they've 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 only they've only lost twice in regulation. All right. So the cup, a lot of draws, and I, but then again, I've only really seen them win once. But if so, you're a true, it was against Man United, which was if good. If you're a true Sunderland fan, you know that winning is now a thing. So yeah. you don't you're not coming over here to see us win. You're just coming to see the team, aren't you? Absolutely. I, I'm going over the team and see the, and to, to to follow on on your question, the reception I get and how people talk to me and, and accept me and make me feel welcome over here is brilliant. It's just great to it's it's a passion of mine. So it's something I have the opportunity to do at this time of year. So it's great. I love it. I think this will be a massive missed opportunity. He's mentioned Toronto a few times. What are your friends like over there that we managed to take Jermaine Defoe away and basically swap for Josie Altidore? Is there any sort of hatred, animosity? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, no. Um, a few of my, fr my mates tried to make fun of me and all that, and I said, hold on a second here. I'm, I'm a season ticket holder for TFC. I've been a season ticket holder for about 2000 and maybe 11 or 12 or something like that. And it, when, it, when, when the deal happened, everybody was making fun of me. I said, are you kidding me? Hold on a sec. Josie wasn't doing anything here. Yeah. I don't think you, you could fault him for his lack of effort. It just, for, for whatever reason, just didn't, didn't click, didn't happen. But Jermaine Defoe, when he started with Toronto, was amazing. And like I said, I'm a season so I got to see every game he played uh, be at home. I don't travel to many away games because North America is so big, so you don't get to go, go to many away games. Our closest away game is five hours, six hours driving. That's our closest away game. That's, uh, yeah, so it's, 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 that's Montreal. That's our close away game. But the way Jermaine Defoe started, it was like a house on fire. And then in my opinion, when he didn't get picked for the World Cup uh, squad in Brazil, in my opinion, he threw his toys out the pram and said, why am I over here? I don't want to do this. Because he was banging in goals for fun with Toronto. And then he just threw his toys out the pram, in my opinion. And then when the SWAT was made, I said, that's the best thing in, my, in the world. I said, because Josie's got a point to prove because of his poor performances not again not through lack of effort but it just didn't didn't happen and then when Jermaine goes back he's going to want to show hey, you know what I still got it and you know what it worked brilliantly for both my clubs well, absolutely both my clubs it worked brilliant I mean I've said this before it, it's probably the most mutually beneficial deal in the history of football yeah. oh, I agree I'm, yeah yeah it, I mean it just worked out 
right place, right time, right players, right clubs. Exactly, you know? exactly. Josie is an absolute legend with Toronto FC. Yeah, that, that's, absolute that's legend. one thing. He scored the winning goal yeah. when we won our first MLS Cup. You he's know, he's, there, yeah. he's, he's amazing for uh, what he, where he is now. No disrespect to him by any stretch, but I think he's found his level. This yeah, is yeah. where he is a big fish in a, in a relatively whatever size pond. Yeah. So, in, I mean, in respect of, you know, kind of Sunderland where we are now and the years of decline that we've had, relegations and, you know, the cup final defeats, etc. Do you, do you still perhaps get the question thrown, you know, at you? Why, why do you still kind of continue to do this? We've, we've spoke with a few people so far and the common theme is a lot of their friends and family have said, you know, are, are you really going to travel that far to go watch Sunderland in League One? Have you, have you ever had any, any sort of reaction that you, you still do this? To be perfectly honest with you, I've had the exact opposite. Yeah. They, they actually commend me because the people that know me, they know my passion for this team and they know how much I love this team and how I portray that and, and get it on the pubs all the time when I can and, and what I do and social media and all that kind of stuff. So all they do is saying, wow, I can't believe you're still doing this for, for where they are now. And I just said, it's my team. I said, you know, you, you can change your wife, you can change this, you can change that, but you can't change your team. So I'm never going to change my team no matter what division they're in. So it, it's in anything I get commended for it, to be perfectly honest with, as opposed to why are you supporting them? Brilliant. Last thing, Martin. What does Sunderland mean to you? Wow, that's a tough question. I've been told that I'm a very, very passionate person, and there's very few things in my life that I, I have the opportunity to get passionate, passionate about. Right. And Sunderland Football Club is one of those. And anybody you ask in, who lives in Toronto that are, my, that are around my friends, that are my friends and that, that live there, they will know how passionate I am about this team. I never miss a, a match when, when we're at home we're visiting all the Toronto people. Uh, for for our gatherings, um, actually, I'm gonna I tell a lie because I'm gonna miss the next two because I'm gonna miss <laughs> I'm here <laughs> so I'm gonna miss tomorrow's, but it's just it's in my blood. I was born and raised with it, and it's something I'll never change. It's, it means the world to me, to be perfectly honest. Fantastic. For any of our listeners, where can we find you on social media? If anybody wants to follow your your future journeys over here, where where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, I'm on Twitter. It's uh, Martin Bates. Um, I think it's Martin S A F C Martin Bates 1973 or Martin S A F C Bates. You see, you'll you'll see me when you put on there, and same thing on Facebook. It's just Martin Bates. I'm the guy. I'm always generally in a red and white shirt on all my profile <laughs> pics, so they'll see it. Fantastic. Thanks, Martin. Thanks. For Thank time. you very much. Cheers. I appreciate the honor. Thanks. Thank you. Right. So uh, we're back. Um, we've had a few special guests, but we've got a very very special guest. Now two very special guests, of course. Two very special um, guests. In front of me, it's Bobby Kerr, and two diagonally my right. Mickey Horswell, how are you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, great, thank you. Very good. And you, Bobby? Hi, I'm fine. It's just working. <laughs> it's working. So. <laughs> it's working, <think> so. Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working for you? Uh, right, yes, good. how are you? I'm all right. A bit worse for wear, but that's all right, isn't it? And what do you do for a living? <laughs> not enough. Not Bobby's enough. interviewing great. Certainly, it's certainly not a hairdresser, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> what do you do now, Bobby? I look after myself. You look after yourself? Yeah. And are you well looked after here in Sunderland? Uh, pardon? Are you well looked after in Sunderland? I've got two dogs, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> <got> two dogs? <laughs> no, no, they are dogs with four legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a good lady, young, young good. lady, yes. And he's well looked after, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, Thank you, Michael. We all, look after, we all look after him. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, it's a great night. It looks like everyone's turned oh, up. It's fantastic, yeah. How, how have you found the night itself? It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. I, I, I can't believe, it, believe it. We've Sorry, met people Michael. from Bulgaria, Canada, uh, Holland, America. They've come from all over the world. And I just didn't realise there'd be that many here. You know, you, maybe you thought maybe he's 10 or something, I think. Yeah. But there's a, there's a good hundred nod there, isn't there? You know, so I think they expected, fantastic night for to get them all together. I said they think they expected 20 or 30, and I think yeah. 130 people have turned up. It just shows up. how right. people think of like, the club, doesn't it? You know, around the world yeah. and, and everything. And I've been and done talks in, in Ireland. I went to Ireland, and I got there, and I thought there'd be 20 or 30 people there. There was about 140 people there in Northern Ireland when I went over, you know? Just, I thought, how do you all support Sunderland? You yeah, know? they've Why? all got their own little different <laughs> stories and everything. And you think, wow, it's fantastic, you know. So and have you had many people coming up to you tonight, like discussing the reasons why they support Sunderland and things like that? <laughs> Nobody or? recognized us. Lies. <laughs> Absolute Not lies. true. Not true <laughs> at all. We get them all the time. The we still get them. Every time we go out, we get them, to be fair. So when, when was yes. the last time either you two bought a pint in Sunderland? And I bet it's not very often that well, you have to... 
Michael's never bought one because he didn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, it's true. But I make up buy for all yours. I make up for them. <laughs> <laughs> I have Michael's. <laughs> so you have his. You have his. Seventy-three. To be fair, I mean, I'm not from Sunderland. I'm from the other. I'm from Stanley and everything. Yeah. Bobby Scottish. But everywhere we go in Sunderland, everybody always looks after us. Yeah. They're always treating us well in the street or we in a the shop shoot. or in a restaurant or in a pub, wherever we go. So everybody treats us with a lot of respect and it's great to go out in town. And I think, you know, we're, we're, still, we're part of the people as well, I think. Well, so um, you should be. Probably the last time the team was so close to the public. Yeah. I mean, nowadays you don't know. I mean, we don't see the players. Yeah. They don't go out. You don't see them out and about or anything. But you see us in the streets. Yeah. to talk to or in a pub it's or in a restaurant and then that's all gone now you know it's so a different world isn't it it is a different bit. completely yeah and I understand that but you know but we still enjoy it we still enjoy getting about and meeting people I've apart from yourselves we're all right I've, <laughs> I've loved it because my missus is uh, my missus's dad is a big Leeds fan so it's been brilliant for me oh I've fantastic like, yeah you should have brought her tonight should have got a good night should have brought them down yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we certainly <laughs> should have no done. but it when we went down to London when Sunderland were playing I mean, there was a few as went, and I couldn't believe the crowd in there. We we came to the end of the where we were all sitting, and looked over, and we seen all the Sunderland fans, and they'd got beat, and the the crowd, you were so proud of the the fans, because they were singing, dancing, and they all they got beat, in, in London. Been magnificent, yeah, the and you you look at you look at the fans, and you you're so proud of them. Yeah, I think I we, am. What we did in London yeah. when we went to the cup final a couple of years ago or last year, yeah, when we went down to Trafalgar Square, and that there's no other club could do that. Absolutely, it not. was just packed of sun. I went down with Charlie, Charlie Metvin, and and I met Stuart Donaldson, and then we went for a meal, and they couldn't believe how many supporters were down there on a Friday night having a little shandy. And everybody to, in the Trafalgar Square, you just you couldn't move in Trafalgar Square. And they, the London people have never yeah. seen anything like that before. Yeah. And we did, we did it three times, you know. Incredible. We, we mentioned, I was talking before, like in the intro before as well, and I was saying, like, I was actually talking about you, Bobby, because you're from Alexandria, is that right? Yeah. Um, and I was just saying, before, like, I, I lived in Glasgow for the best part of 10 years, and obviously I know what Scotland can well, be better, like for... Better check me pots. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <laughs> 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 all right. Party when he glass regions in one room. But I can see exactly what it's like when it comes to like community, and that's what brought me towards Scotland in general is, is community and things like that. But you're the opposite way, Bobby. I mean, I think you've lived here pretty much since you've pretty much since the seventies, haven't you? Give well, I take. came. I came here when I was fifteen, and the, the man that brought me down was Charlie Ferguson, and he. He was a scout, and he, he did all the scouting in Scotland. And his mum lived about half an hour away. He wasn't very good at his job, obviously, if he brought him down. In. <laughs> all the Scotsmen he could have brought, he brought him. You know, you've got to put up with some assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking on <laughs> Anyway, you've got to. But we controlled them. Yeah. You know, he was he, he was told to mark a certain person. We won't mention his name, but the lad never got a kick. He did a couple of times, but <laughs> we had to control him, and then we quietened him down. And always quiet, always quiet. Then we would tell tell Mickey, go on, kick him. Bobby, Bobby used to come across to me if they had a, a player, <laughs> the other team who had a, who was doing the job, and they would, and they used to come and say. I think the number six needs to go in the bath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something like that. Not, not go and hammer him. Just, I think he needs a bath. I said, right. Yeah, Ten that minutes need, later, he was off. That the... didn't come from the directors <laughs> or the manager. We better put that right. <laughs> I, I always wonder when I watch the, the 73 Cup final back, yeah. obviously slightly before my time, but when I watch it back, the Richie Pitt tackle. Oh, he's a cracker. I always wonder, would that last these days? You get I was so mad away, at that you? tackle because... It wasn't me that made it. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought you should have got six months for it, but yeah, never mind. Yeah. He would have today, wouldn't he? But, he won the you know, ball, though, didn't he? Well, got it? 
He won the ball, didn't he? No, um, he, he no, the ball wasn't there. It wasn't and his there. kneecap. <laughs> so, so you know, before the, that cup final, obviously, 1973, obviously we were massive underdogs. Everybody knew we were huge yeah. underdogs. Did, in the we back of your mind, that. I was gonna, that's what no. I was going to ask, did you straight no. away think we could beat these today? No, yeah, of course we, we could were, beat these we, today. We couldn't get at them quick enough. Yeah. You know, we were yeah. raring to go from as soon as we won the semi final. Yeah. You know, we, we, we weren't frightened of anybody, were we? What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> Probably looks like he's frightened of you a little bit. Hey, what's a good anybody, job I won the touch? That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Was Bobby's, Somebody Bobby's says, contribution was to the game, he won the toss. <laughs> Somebody said to me, <laughs> Somebody said to me, was it the weather? You know, that was it because it, the wind was blowing there, you know, when you went to do the toss? He says, no, I just wanted to be famous by turning round. <laughs> <laughs> now to do with the weather, now to do out. <laughs> I no, just we, fancy. We, the only time round. we ever got nervous was. Um, when we went out, I don't know if you remember then or not, but when you came out, you had to stand to get introduced to loyalty, royalty yeah. or whoever it was. But in them days, you stood facing the other team. Okay. Yeah. So there was a team there and a team here, opposite each other. Yeah. No, nowadays, they stand in one line. Yeah, yeah. But and then we had to stand and they played the national anthem. And then we had to stand and stare. And, and I stood and stared at Alan Clark, who was a big hero of mine and everything. And think, wow, what a chuff are we doing here with this lot? That was the only time I ever got nervous. Yeah. As soon as it stopped and we could move about again, then we were raring to go at them, you know. But that was the only ever time, a minute and a half, while they played the national anthem. After the game, did, uh, did you have any interaction with Don Revy? Because we all know how, how sort of competitive Don Revy was. Did, did he say, well done, lads? No, or? Don didn't, but the team did. The team yeah. did, okay. A lot of the team came in our dressing room. Yeah. I think they were after the champagne, weren't they? Was, there was champagne and lagers <laughs> flying everywhere. You can't I imagine them. Yeah, but it was. Uh, it was fantastic in the dressing room, and a lot of their lads came in and yeah. said, You deserved it on the day. Fantastic, yeah. well done. We're Absolutely. pleased for you and everything, you know, yeah. which was good. You know, the big hard lads, Hunter and, and yeah. Giles and all them, they all came in and said a little bit, you know. So yeah. it was good. You know, it was we really talk good. about going back to tonight a little bit and the, the, the fans and the atmosphere you have in like a little room like this. I mean, I've been part of it in terms of part of a fan base. But when it comes to like 73, I mean, I seen what Wembley was like at Trafalgar Square. I seen it against Manchester City, 1992, 1990. 1973, exactly the same, if not a little bit more. This in a room inspires me, but coming out to like the amount of fans that you did at 73, if you had any confidence, how high, how further up did that go? How much confidence did you get from seeing that? sea of red and white how much did you know if you didn't beforehand that you were going to win that game just saying that we, we didn't really think about it then one of the nicest parts of the day was after the cup final we went down to the dortmund the park lane to one of the big hotels mm -hmm. the grove and the house of somebody and we yeah. had a party for about five thousand people can't imagine how many people there was a big meal on them and to be honest we were all tipsy because yeah. we'd been celebrating after the game at wembley and all the way back to the hotel we were all mortal and at about two o'clock in the morning, we never got eight because we were around all the tables and dancing on the tables and everything. And about two o'clock or three o'clock, I was starving. So I said to a couple of lads, I'm hungry. They said, oh, so am I. I said, well, come on, we'll go and get something to eat. So six of us, six of the team, came out of the Grove. And I don't know whether you know Park Lane or not. Yeah, yeah. We walked to the yeah, top yeah. of Park Lane to Oxford Street. We turned right, looking for somewhere to get something to eat. And the first place we come to was a McDonald's. <laughs> about 60 yards down Oxford Street. We said, oh, we'll go and get a McDonald's. You're not allowed McDonald's. This is the middle of the party. <laughs> the middle of the party winning the cup. So we walked into McDonald's, and I'm not kidding, it was packed of Sunderland supporters. And six of the team walked in. You couldn't believe it. They were, they were chucking hamburgers about and chips. <laughs> and it was fun. We, had, we were in there about an hour. It was fantastic. You know? I bet your Bobby was quiet, though. No, Bobby was, he was getting drunk in the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to mention that wouldn't be hamburgers. I would be having. <laughs> uh, you had to look after the young lads. Yeah. Things like that wouldn't happen now, would they? Did you, know? you sneak no. away on Friday night before the final? No, I didn't. Were you involved I was with in bed anybody? With Joe. I was in, in bed with Joe Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Joe had a big bag of sweets. <laughs> so, Bobby. Nothing else. I didn't know you were like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but my boyfriend is. I think. Oh, <laughs> so, Bobby, did you go out the night before the cup final? No. 
No. Uh, Quiet night. Are you telling me we the all, truth? We all one went out. Thing, we all went out on the thing, Thursday night. We all went yeah. out together. Hang on. On the Thursday. One thing I've, Thursday. I've got to say is I've got to thank Vox Brewery for making me and a certain person who roomed with me enjoy six cans of Norseman. Norseman? Norseman you Lager. You enjoyed Norseman? Norseman <laughs> Lager. Wow. We were given by Vox a few weeks before and a certain person that I room with... He made a hell of a save, the person you talked about. <laughs> All oh, right. Hey! <laughs> can't, can't think who it is. Who, who, we're not telling you who it is. Who, who's who that? Who could that be? Graham. I who don't know. Who, who's that? I don't know. Who's anyway, that? Anyway. James, 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 J James. Uh, James. I don't know. We, we were so. in the bedroom <laughs> with one Norseman the night before the final, and somebody knocked the door. And it was always one of these pranks, be a player. So all we said was, go away. And then we heard the voice shouting, it's Coxie. Arthur was a coach. <laughs> so Arthur Cox. we ducked cans away <laughs> under the bed, opened the door. He says, I'm just checking to see if you're in. Okay, right, ta-ra, and out the door. <laughs> out came the cans again. <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoyed it. Some of the lads, the young'uns. Me, yeah. I never went out. <laughs> Did you not go out? No. I was, I was in the room with, with Joe and Billy Elliot painting our boots, if you remember. <laughs> hey! What? That's wrong. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got sponsored, I can tell him now. Cause no, you there. can't. We used to, in it's them days, there was only... It. People used to wear Adidas or Puma. Yeah. That's the only boots that there was. And we weren't getting much money for this cup game, or be, to, be, to be honest yeah. with you, you know. But we got... A company came and asked to sponsor our boots. And we thought, oh, great. Because we only got one pair a year. Boots had holes in them and everything. You still only, you never got a new pair. So we thought, oh, great new pair of boots. And they were called Stylo. And George Best had just brought this new boot out called Stylo. They said, we'll give you 250 quid each if you all, but everybody's got to wear these boots. We said, all right, great. So it'll be fantastic getting a new pair of boots, getting paid to wear them. So we went down and on the Thursday we were training and this big van came with boxes of new football boots. So we, we were all excited, got the boots out, tried them on. They were terrible. They were, they were rock hard. We thought we kind of play in these, but we wanted the 250 quid. Yeah. So what we did on the Friday night, which is what I did for you, <laughs> Billy Elliot, we all knew the team. Billy Elliot brought everybody's boots to my room, Adidas and Puma, with some whitewash and boot polish. Uh -huh. Him and Joe boot polished everybody's boots so the, the three stripes were blacked out and the Puma stripe was blacked out. And then Stylo, if you look at the picture next door, everybody's got boots with two lines up the front of the boots, like a skunk. Yeah. Yeah. Two lines up there. That was whitewash that we painted on on the Friday night before the game. <laughs> if you look at us in the second half playing, because it rained like mad in the first half, you'll see with the red, the white stripes and the Puma stripes coming back through <laughs> on the boots <laughs> because the, the whitewash was washing off on the boots. <laughs> you have a look at it on the pictures, yeah, you'll see. So just, and we never got paid because they sued us uh, for the money. I've got one more question I want to ask you both of you. Uh, just a couple of lads have asked us to ask it. What, what does winning the FA Cup actually mean to you? How, I mean, do, is it, you must think about it every day. I mean, what, what does it actually mean? Well, to be honest, it means coming back on a long trip and getting near Scotch Corner, changing over and coming out in an open deck bus and seeing everybody on the bridges, on all the roads, yeah, I bet that was screaming and shouting. And I tell you what, I never, ever forget it. Yeah. And that is what Sunderland fans and people thought and we still, I still live in Sunderland and I'm still walking around the streets and there's still people talking to you. And that's what life's all about. You got nowhere to live like. You just walk, <laughs> you just you walk guys, around the streets. You live in Stanley, don't, <laughs> I don't you? Know about you, I've got goosebumps here. Yeah, <laughs> you Catalonia. Yeah. Yeah. To, be, to be fair, the, the cup final didn't make us millionaires. You know, we never made many, much, much money out of it. No. But to win, I'm a local lad. 
to yeah. win the FA Cup with your team who you've supported since I was like eight year old. It's something special. You, you and we're still living off it now. To, it was that it was that good for us and the so people are that good to us. We still live off it now, you know, we get yeah. we get gigs, go and do talkings and things, all because of that day. A, and the supporters world, have just been it? so good to us for forty odd years and everything. It's it's just a great feeling, you know. It's a different world these days with the money and the fact that you can be a millionaire as a footballer, but yeah, you would never, ever, ever change it for that 90 minutes. And that's because yeah. of... That's the because cup, of solid, that was the it? biggest It was the biggest trophy in the world, apart so from the World Cup at the time. Well, yes. It's, it's domestic, nowhere domestic near now. Trophy, it's nowhere yeah. near, anywhere near. Yeah. Now, you know, it's, they've, they've, they've spoilt it a little bit with all the money and everything. But yeah. it was something special that we did together. And we're all still good friends. You know, the majority of us all still speak to each other and... I play golf with a couple of them yeah. every week. We still play with all the lads together. So yeah. it's, it's a special, special time and special part of our lives, you know. It's great. Fantastic. Yep. Mickey, Bobby, thanks very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us, Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, so we're well into the night and we are now joined with the Irish branch. We've got Gary and Shane from the Irish branch. How are you doing, lads? Not too bad yourselves, lads. Not too bad, boys. Yeah, not bad, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, who's your favourite Sunderland Irish player to play for Sunderland? You see, there's a tough one, like, there's been a lot, like. You see, you have to look at the old ones, Charlie Hurley and all, looking back. But I wouldn't remember them, obviously, but <laughs> looking back, uh, you know, all the older lads talking about them. And see, I'm sort of a newish Sunderland supporter, so about 2006 onwards. So, John O'Shea, I'd say, probably be. Yeah, I think John O'Shea is a pretty solid one. Gary? A lot of people have said that. Obviously, I, you look at Queenie, right? But then, just with God rest his soul, Liam Miller, like, I, I know he, yeah. he's an absolute legend, like, in what he done, and unfortunately it happened. But Queenie is, you have to give, obviously, Liam a shout, but Queenie is Queenie, you know what I mean? Ah, it's, uh, it's got to be Quinny, uh, I think. I don't know, probably because my mum used to fancy Quinny. <laughs> so it was always, like, in our house, it was, my mum was, oh, Neil Quinn this, Neil Quinn that. So yeah. it's just been dropped into us from a young age. For me, because I've met him, he's a great guy, Andy Reid. I like Andy Reid a lot. I like the boys a bit too much, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> a bit like myself. Yeah. So, so I suppose it's a generic question. Obviously, over in Ireland, there's a lot of support for your Liverpools, your Man United. How on earth are you two ended up supporting Sunderland? Yeah. Honestly, for me, it started with the Irish Consortium. Obviously, like I was, I was a neutral at the time. Yeah, just mm -hmm. a, a football fan. So yeah. I kind of, I was like, right, I'll have a bit of that, and got bitten by the bug. And the, the city itself and the people in the city just kind of endeared to me because I'd be quite working class, and I just feel it's it's a working class city and the salt of the earth, you know. So I just fell in love with it. You know, fell yeah. over it. Yeah, I feel it's the same. Most Irish fans started in Roy Keane, Drummerville era, like, you know, probably the same for myself. I remember when I was maybe six or seven years old, going into a local sports shop and seeing a Sunderland jersey. And I had no affiliation to any football club, so I was like, yeah, you know what? This is a Sunderland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, one, sure. thing, one thing I will say on that, though, as well, is when I was growing up, there was a fella across the road. Uh, we always played football or whatever, a gang of us, but... He was obsessed with Kevin Phillips. Now, I wasn't a Sunderland fan at the time, but he was talking with Kevin Phillips that much that yeah. it was always there for me to see yeah. as well, you know? So, uh -huh. got to enjoy the good times yeah. oh, without actually you. appreciating them, yeah, you know? Yeah, well, the yes. few and far between. But I like how you mentioned there as well the, the sort of the connection, because I do feel as I, I travel Ireland a fair bit through personal circumstance, and I do find there's a hell of a lot of, I suppose, comparisons between a lot of Irish people that, that work in class, hard work and spirit in the North East and obviously historically, you know, Sunderland, Jarrow, South Shields, etc. have always been tied to places in Ireland. So I suppose it's in a weird way, it's kind of a natural progression sort of. But yeah, it's yeah. nice to hear that we still get, we still make the journey over the Irish Sea as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Taiwan, Canada and, and well, so Well, that's forth. exactly it. Like even today we met people from, like you said, Taiwan, there was Canadian, Danish, you had Bulgarian, you had everybody over, yeah. you know, and it's it's mad to see. I know I haven't seen them today, but I know Feyenoord have a gang as well that we bumped into on South End, and it's just, it's great to see that the club has so many kind of not a spider web, but essentially like a spider yeah, yeah. web, little uh -huh. kind of bits here, bits there, and yeah, no, it's it, it's great to see. Yeah. So how often do you find yourselves getting over from a game there? Because obviously it's not as far fetched as some places. It's a little hop, but you know. This is actually uh, my first visit to the stadium, right? 
ever. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Nice. Well, I, and when we're in League One as well, hopefully yeah. we'll get the win. My first ever game was the Checker Trade Trophy last year against Bolton, okay. and I went to the playoff final as well. I was at Bolton away this year as well. Not a great start so far, anyway. Yeah, yeah we don't do very well at Wembley. Yeah. I, um, I have this little hole in my pocket called Sunderland AFC, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, whether it's home games, away games, I, I seem to find me anywhere kind of between 10 and 20 games a season. Yeah. But the worst part is, you, you get over and you think, right, grand, cheap flights, cheap match tickets now, I suppose, cheap accommodation. You get into the club shop, you spend 150 quid every single time without fail. So, yeah. so do you have a favourite away game or away stadium? I have a, a least favourite. And we're going again this season, so South End away is an absolute oh, hole. Okay. I'm sorry if that offends, but no, it's I mean, just sure we'd all raise a drink to that. It yeah. was a bad, it was a bad time last season, and fingers crossed this season it'll be better. You know. I, I think as a small disclaimer, Johnny, we should say that Gary's views on indicative of broken reports, but South End is a shithole indeed. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your words for it, lads. Never been. I think, I think the best part of South End is, and you'll agree, Gary, is most definitely the when road you out of South I End. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I agree. In the Premier League, did you get to go to any... A few, a few. Um, I have to say, you enjoy an L United trip, Man United trip, just because Manchester is so mm -hmm. easily accessible uh -huh. and there's just so much happening there, you know. Where else was there? There was Villa Park a couple of years ago. Villa Park is it's a bit wild, you know, um, in around Aston and then Erdington close to it. It's a, it's a fun time, you know, you go over and I'm lucky I have family in Birmingham, so it was handy enough and they were Villa fans, so a bit of banter through that as well. Um, but you know, like in the Premier League days, I was a little bit younger, a little less financially stable and the likes that, so there wasn't as many games. It's kind of last four or five years, I suppose, I've been getting over as often as I can and th thankfully kept doing it now, you know. So Shane, obviously we're heading into tomorrow, you're breaking your Stadium of Life virginity. Prepare to be disappointed, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, what, what are you looking forward to the most tomorrow and I suppose what you're hoping to see? has to be a win, really, doesn't it? Like, you can't expect any less. Well, it, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? We'd need it at this stage in the season. Like, we've been on a good run. You'd expect a win. Like, I'd like to see Lafferty get a start okay. for one. Yeah. I think he has potential to be what we need, a big target man, because that seems to be... A, Seems to be the way we're playing lately. Maguire's been playing well recently as well. The new signings, every time they've came on, they've looked promising. Bailey Wright, I've been very impressed by so far. And yeah, I think Josh Scone has potential to be a very good CDM, you know. Which are hopefully, hopefully an easy win, anyway. And just to tie us up, lads, we'll tie it up. I want a prediction for tomorrow. Bear in mind this will go out after the match. So be careful what you wish for. I, I don't know. I think. I'm going to be very optimistic, and the reason I'm going to be optimistic is we have our little lucky charm with us in Shane here, you know. Um, no pressure, Shane? No, no, I don't, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. I think now, obviously, we've probably had our quota of clean sheets for, for the season, to be honest with you, after the run we had. Uh, I'm thinking 3-1. 3-1? 3-1, yeah. Shane, what about yourself? I think a 1-0 win. Sunderland. That's about that. We don't see us scoring much more. The defence has been really solid lately, so... 1-0 yeah. win would be a good result. Go on, Johnny, round us off. Last question for me then, favourite Irish musician? Where's life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, thank you very much, lads, for joining us. Enjoy the game yes. tomorrow, I hope. Thanks yeah, for having us, lads. Thanks for having thank us, very much, boys. Yeah. Right, welcome back to the Roper Report podcast. We are well and truly flown in the evening now, where everyone is at least half cut, and we are probably going to be sounding well all over the place but here we are we are joined by colin colin backhouse you'll probably know from many sunderland away games making regular appearances up and down the country on frankie wheatley's battle bus a few years ago he left sunderland and he moved over to malta and we're now joined by two fellow sunderland fans from malta also colin how are you doing i'm great it's absolutely a delight to be here well, Colin, like I said, it's been a few years, obviously. I know that you still make the occasional visit to the stadium light when you can. What's gone wrong in the years that you've been away? Funny enough, when I moved away in 2014, I think that was like the major decline, because if you remember, we had like the major relegation battles when I left. I had a, funny enough, I had a real battle trying to watch the games itself, because Sunderland are not really well known in Malta, unfortunately. It's Man U, Liverpool, Chelsea. So I used to try and keep in touch with Sunderland by 
being the first in the bar because I knew the owner of the bar. So if I turned up first and then 27 Inter Milan turned up, they used to get told to do one and Colin's here first. He's the only one in the bar that sports Sunderland. But we'll let him watch it. So that's what I used to do. And I used, because it was my little bar and I used to have a few, but probably five or six beers. Unfortunately, a lot of the games ended in defeat. When I moved over, in memory was, um, I think it's the year we stopped up, I think we got beat away at Spurs 5-1 when Catamull scored a screaming to put us 1-0 yeah. up. And I thought, this is it, this is it. It's <laughs> going to be one of the best games ever. And um, a Maltese lad who couldn't be heated here, he sports Sunderland and Inter Milan. And I remember receiving a message on Facebook. He says, you know what? We're seven points adrift. I think that's where it was at the time. There's five games left. I think we had to play Man U, Chelsea away, and all these type of games. And he said, uh, you know what, Colin? He says, we're going to stay up. And I went, go away, man. How away, man? Have you watched us? You know, getting beat 5-1 off Spurs. And then, and then the rest is history. Obviously, we'll beat uh, Chelsea away, Man United away when Larson scored. And that was one of the most memorable ever relegation sort of battles where we actually stayed up. Yeah, the greatest escape, so yeah, call it now. one of the best ever. So, if we weren't well known, obviously, in our Premier League days over in Monta, do you have any difficulty now following following the football? Well, what sort of coverage do we get um, out there? That's very interesting, actually, because there's more watching now than what there was then. We have a supporters club in Slema, where Justin and Carl come. Mm -hmm. um, there's on the Czech trade final last year, we had 16 which is a really big turnout. Yeah. Um, some weeks there's only three of us. It depends on work and family issues and one thing or another, but there's always somebody there. Um, but the pub shows about three different games, but suddenly they're always, always on, Brilliant. if needed. Has, has the Netflix documentary had anything to do with the upturn and support? Or was that like, did the upturn and support um, predate the Netflix thing? To be honest, uh, there's a Chelsea guy who I know over there, a Chelsea guy who's, he's a, he's a mil this guy I know, he's a millionaire, he's got loads of businesses, he's into currency exchange, he's into pubs, he's into everything. And he came up to me last year, and I didn't even recognise, a bit like tonight, Craig, where he's grown a beard, he's pimped up a bit, you know, like, like these things happen. I just lost weight with the relegation. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't cope after double relegation, and, that's, that's my issue. In it, fairness, Craig, you are looking fantastic. He is, isn't he? I, I'm more or less fancy him, he looks great, We're starting to win games, you know, I might get fat yeah. again if we get in the Premier League. <laughs> anyway, going back to this Chelsea fan, he says, oh, cool. He says, how are you doing, mate? I says, who are you? He says... He says, listen, you blind get. He says, if you, if you walk a bit closer, he says, you'll realise who I am. And when I walk closer to him, I realise he'd grown a beard and he'd got a bit, you know, a bit grown hair and that. And he says, you know what? He says, I've been dying to see you. He says, I watched that Netflix series, the first one. And he says, it was one of the best things. He says, and your club is absolutely brilliant. And he says, and I'm not the only one who feels the same way. And I sort of have a lump in my throat. I was devastated, obviously, because you know what happened. But it, it gave you sort of a sense of pride that... There's these people around outside of, I mean, Chelsea's obviously a massive club, he, and he's not a plastic either. He goes to Champions League games, he flies over quite often in a private jet, I believe. So he's a, you know, he forks out a lot of money following uh, Chelsea, but he just said, and I even invited him to come to the Sunderland game, and at that point, the conversation stopped. <laughs> do, you, do you think, just, just off the back of that documentary you mentioned, obviously, it gives an enormous sense of pride. For example, when you watch the other ones, like the Manchester City one, it's, it's quite polished. And it doesn't really give you an insight as to what it's like to support Sunderland. But we've seen the first season of, of the documentary about us. We know the second one's coming out and, you know, it follows Sunderland fans up and down the country. It shows the, the years of suffering that we've had, if you like. Yeah. So would, would you agree that it's, it's kind of shown us in a, in a good light, if you like, to, to basically say that? Um, it has shown us in a good light, but I think, I think it was on the edge a lot of the time as well, where it was... I hate to say that I've never been embarrassed supporting Sunderland, but I actually felt sorry because obviously I was away at the time and seeing some of the faces yeah. at the away game. I think Norman, I think it was one game in the away yeah, game. That's right, yeah. Norman was on there that's from right. Pete Lee, yeah. and I felt so sorry for him. I had a tear in my eye seeing Norman so upset and the passion and people kicking the hordens and stuff and like pushing the camera away. And I can 100% see why they were doing that because it was just so sad yeah. to see the demise of the club and how the hell we've managed to keep, say, steady 28 to 30,000 is beyond me. But at the end of the day, for the crowds we're getting, for the sh rubbish that we've been through, because it has been at that season in the championship, was, it was just disgusting. Yeah. It was rubbish. 
So when, when you have events like this tonight and you, you look around and you see how far people have travelled, I mean, you've travelled from Malta and with all due respect in comparison to some people, yeah. it's it's nothing. We've had people from Taiwan, we've had people from Philadelphia in America. Oh, I know, it's, it's in incredible. Um, funny enough, one of my work coll colleagues, he's um, Lithuanian, and I was talking to him yesterday before, was it yesterday? Yeah, before I finished work last night at five o'clock, he says, I spoke to him, he says, oh, I says, I'm going to the UK, he says, oh, what are you going back for? He says, oh, it's International Fans Weekend with my football club. And he says, oh, Sunderland, I went, he went, what, what, Sunderland, you got fans? Like, from outside of the area? I went, mate, I says, they're coming from all over. Um, everywhere they're coming, you know, from all these different countries, far and wide, from Taiwan and Canada and America. And he couldn't believe it. He says, I really didn't know that Sunderland were this type of club. Because unless you are a Sunderland fan or maybe a Newcastle fan or a Borough fan, we are from Nobody really knows much about Sunderland, apart from when we won the FA Cup, when we had a few brief years in the pit but nobody knows much about Sunderland. When in Malta, especially, nobody... Like, when, it's funny, because when the pub, when we're watching the match, someone will come in, can you put the Everton and... I don't know, say Everton versus Wolves game on, and they'll look up and see us watching the Sunderland versus Fleetwood game. <laughs> uh, they go to the bar and can you put the game on? Uh, no, the Sunderland lads are in, and they're like, they'll walk past and shake their heads to say, who's Sunderland? And that is, it's, that is, it's as if it's a club that used to be famous. Yeah. And I think that we want that status back. Yeah. On the on the subject of fans, well, I think we've got two new fans of the old pink slice over here. Well, we've got to get, when, them, on. Got to get when, them speaking. When you two have been uh, having your little pals mutant over here on about the battle bus and whatnot, I've been introducing some chaps to the pink slice, and uh, <laughs> I think we're, think we're good for yeah. the pink slice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. So, <laughs> we know Colin, obviously born and bred Sunderland. He's been through it all. How is it that you two came to support Sunderland Football Club? From the era, from Kevin Phillips and Dan Quinn. Super Kev. 99, 2000. That was the glory days, isn't it? That was the start, yeah. <laughs> and was it the case that you just seen Sunderland on the television and? Not really, not really. No, I just I like I liked English football. Okay. I I watched. And uh, I started supporting Sunderland, mainly because of the fans. Yeah, that, that's that's the main reason. That, that's what what pushed me to, to keep on supporting. And uh -huh. All right. we know Collins mentioned about how well received Sunderland have been in in Malta off the back of the documentary right. and things like that. All right. Do you still perhaps have it where some of your friends and family think, you know, why on earth do you support Sunderland? Would, would it be easier to support one of the so-called bigger teams who win every week? Do you, do you get questioned on yeah, yeah, why you still follow Sunderland? A lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and, and everyone sometimes take take the bis take the bis out of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that that doesn't change, does it? We all get yeah, the piss taken out of us. I, yeah. I don't. I don't care. I've Especially. Been, I've been coming here the first time I've came. 1999 2000 season. Mm -hmm. I've come, I don't know how, how many games I've been here. And Justin as well. I don't some, care. I don't yeah. care what, what they say. <laughs> There's even lads who we haven't even met yet, yeah. funny enough, in Sun sorry to support Sunland, but they just haven't been able to come to a game or we just haven't met up to watch. But there's actually, I think, a lot more people. And yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. are too scared to watch it, believe it or not, because they know that we're pretty crap. And, yeah. and one guy. I think he's been to one game in two years to watch it with us and he'll say, I'm not coming because every time I come I get beat, I say, listen mate, I say, that's all of us. <laughs> it's like, it's life. it doesn't matter who comes, we'll still get beat at that's certain right. times. But there's that's a guy right. who came over to the Checker Trade final, um, who we've never even met. So there is other um, Sunderland fans in Montage, we have met them. There's, and there's a few with a passing interest as well who support Sunderland and another club. There's an old guy who is, who was, Born, I think he's 67 year old, and I tried to get him over at this event. He's born and bred in Malta. He's never ever been to a Sunderland game, and I was even if I'd have had the money, I'd have paid for him to come. Because you know, like these stories are good, you know. He, and um, funny enough, he turned up for a game in Slim. We got beat. He was like, and I think he got barred from the pub or something after that. He was this old guy. He's like a little old Maltese guy. Billy introduced him. He got. He, he was like shit this, shit this, and, like crying at the telly. He's like. Nothing he says, it's never been never been very good in all the years. I think it's been good. he's been watching Sun, I'm sure, since about nineteen fifty seven. Wow. Something like that. Well, I mean, just kind of wrapping things up, I suppose. I mean I, for, for me I've I've never lived outside of the area. I literally live ten minutes away from the stadium light. So when you initially moved away, you know, did 
did, did you think that, you know, your, your interest might sort of dwindle or anything like that in terms of you might not be able to see us as much? I, I suppose, obviously, you've mentioned it's been, say, five or six years you've lived away now. Yeah, it's you six, know, year, six years next month, actually. So, so. In, in terms of, obviously, your absence, I, I know you've yeah. said you've been back and forth yeah. and there's been some enormous highs, the greatest of escapes, oh, the, the yeah. six in a row, yeah. but there's been some incredibly bad, bad times has, as well. Um, I don't think we've ever been to a stage where I said, I'm not watching the match today because I just can't watch it anymore. There has been days, I'll admit, where it's been sunny. I've had a chance to go on the boat for the day. And I said, boat or match, this is like in the real deep, bad times of the championship. And I'm ashamed to say that I've actually gone on the boat because it was getting that painful. It was affecting my health. Yeah. And, and all the stress, this, this is like no joke that Sunderland has finished up giving me like loads of bits of illnesses with bad blood pressure, other bits and pieces of medical problems, and, and, and I'm convinced it's been caused by something. By drinking too much, trying to avoid, drinking too much, trying to avoid the bad times. These two lads who just walked in here, me two nephews. Well, I was going to say, we're, we're mentioning avoiding drinking too much, and literally a round of pints has just been uh, placed yeah, down. Yeah, so that's, whether that's the best I did time stop, to finish or not. I did I stop for three like weeks. the beautiful presenters as well. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Great. So one, one final question for, for the two, two guys who live, you know, born and bred Maltese is how difficult is it being a Sunderland fan in Malta when everybody wants to support Man U, Chelsea, Arsenal? So I don't on. really care. Hard? I don't really care. You don't care? I don't. <laughs> when we were, in the, when we're in the Premier League and we used to beat United or... Uh, but I, some I, people in Malta actually just went <laughs> take the piss out of you. But, <laughs> you know, it's life. It, it's our choice. And, we're, and we will keep it. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Yes, thank you very much. The Enjoy Maltese Macams. Brilliant. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Jonathan, allow me pink slice. Take away. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're at the International Fans Day, sort of the pre evening, like the evening before the International Fans Day, with lots of the Sunderland fans who've travelled from every corner of God's green earth. And we're sat here with Eric and Nancy from the, the Netherlands. Netherlands. <laughs> How are you two this evening? How are you doing? Pretty well. I mean, the evening is already well for us, almost done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been a it's been a really good evening. Yeah. 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 How's your day been? I know you've you've been you've been trekked to a, a tour of the stadium. You've you've had the opportunity to take off Gucci's shirt from the uh, <laughs> from the change room and put your own up, Nancy. So, how has how has the day been in total? How how have we trekked you? It's been nice. Very nice. We came here. I mean, uh, we have experience here. Last year also, Fair Museum. Yeah. People are very friendly here, open, and they always wanted to say something to you or show you something and indeed the tour she made some fun and uh, hopefully it will uh, have some success tomorrow Absolutely. yes i won't say what i did in the dressing room <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say what you did in the dressing room nancy so <laughs> <laughs> so um how how long have you supported sunland for uh support but it started buying a shirt in a local sports shop okay and it was around 12. And I've just asked the people from the fan museum here, the white shirt with the tiny red stripes on it, but I cannot find it here. It must be there because it's a retro shirt. So it's the one that's like, it's all white, but it's got the little red sort of yeah, racing stripes. It's almost, yeah, yeah. almost white. Yeah. I bought it when I liked it, and it was from Sunderland. They came from the Northeast. I live in the Northeast, so, mm -hmm. but even better. So the reason you support Sunderland is because you liked that the That was shirt. the first step. <laughs> that was the first step. <laughs> <laughs> so you start, and at that time you didn't have internet. I'm a bit old, you know. So no internet, no further no connection. So it was Saturday afternoon. BBC, listen to radio. <laughs> didn't hear much, but uh, I heard the scores. So what's the uh, local? Uh, what's the sort of big team in Holland that's near where you live then? Because uh, uh, Groningen. Which one? The, the local team where I live is Groningen. Okay. Because yeah. I was thinking about the Dutch teams that Sunderland have played. We played Ajax twice at the Stadium of Light, actually. Yeah. And I just wondered Indeed. if uh, you might remember either of those games. Cause we I, I, I remember it because I know the stadium is a little bit... They looked at the stadium of uh, Ajax, you mm -hmm. know, and then they built it. But I mean, for most fans, and also for me, it was nice that we played against Feyenoord. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, it's fine, uh, right? Yeah. So do you, do you support a team in, in the Netherlands, or is it just something? Yeah, like well, I'm, I'm from the north, so Groningen is the team there. Right. But I mean, from the top, I'm a more final man. Okay, okay. Yeah. So from, I mean, from Feyenoord, we've had 
we had Lens from Final, didn't we? Uh, yes, yes, we did. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was. He was a bright. He was a bright flame, wasn't he? Shone yeah. bright and then air died off. They have a kind of, of a branch. So, uh, from memory, the Dutch players that we've had: Patrick van Anholt and Bolo Zenden and Jermaine Lons. Zenden, it was. Hey. Zenden. 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 Oh, yeah. Zenden. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this earlier. No. We couldn't remember the no, name no, of no, certain no, no, Dutch player. We were both thinking, like, who yeah. was it that played for us? He was. Yeah, he scored yeah. some yeah. pretty good goals. Zenden yeah. scored my. Favorite goal ever at the yeah, stadium, right? So, um, brilliant yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. my favorite goal celebration ever, and it wasn't even his goal. I mean, everyone knows yeah, what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about uh, have you been to any away games, or do you not get to some underway no. games? No. No. Nah, well, uh, what can I say? I saw uh, five games they played friendly, mm -hmm. one in Germany, four in the Netherlands. Okay. Really? So oh. that were kind of away games, and and it was funny because local police, etc., always expect okay, friendly game, nobody comes there. And someone always take a free fun on people with them. <laughs> so suddenly, like so then, thousands then of suddenly, people just descend upon the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, suddenly the local police are like, oh my gosh, English supporters because they're not really well yeah, known. Not the best reputation, sadly. No problem at all. No problem at all. So never is pre-season Sunderland fans had yes. never is any issues. So I want to before yeah. <laughs> I want to bring it back because I know Nancy mentioned earlier that she doesn't want to say what you did in the Sunderland changing rooms before we got here. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with that. So I've I've got video evidence that you. Oh, you went around and found the. Video what did you evidence? do to cement your shirt, Nancy? What did you? I gave him the best luck for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell him because it might freak him out. So then he might not have. You know, he might want to. We'll make sure he doesn't hear this. Yeah. No, no it was. I didn't realize at the time when we were in the change rooms because I. I was, you know, they take you into the original, the real change room, mm -hmm. and they have these numbers, and they're they're turned around. So I didn't realize that there's actually their their jerseys for tomorrow. So I started taking them off. <laughs> Not my, yeah, taking them off the hooks, <laughs> taking them off the hooks, and uh, and then somebody said, "Oh, those are the real jerseys," and I went. Yeah. Doesn't seem like anybody was desperate to stop you, though. No, <laughs> so. no, no. And there's yeah. video evidence, so there were a few people that thought Can it was funny. Guy did something like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was he there at the time? He wasn't there at the time. No, he's sure. He saw it. He's not. We'll not, we'll not tell them. We'll not tell them. So, um, Sunderland, don't, uh, something we don't often do is win. So, have you been to see Sunderland win games? Or has it always been a... Uh, My first game ever here, mm -hmm. it was now about 25 years ago. Okay. It was at Roker Park. Yeah. It was against Grimsby Town. It was first division. It was there. Ethan they won Derby. two one. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your? I mean, you've got quite an interesting history with Sunderland, really. I mean, there's, you showed me a couple of books earlier before we started recording, and yeah. your face actually appears in some of the photos. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. connection, like the sort of I think one of the pages was called the Dutch Connection or something like that. So, how far back do you go with Sunderland? Obviously, you started following us back when we had that that particular kit. So, what does your history look like? My history, no, just what I, I told you about uh, the, the shirt I bought. Yeah. Then you start listening to the radio because there were no further connections. Then it started after I was 25. It was it for the first time. That was the first game I Amazing. saw. And then after that, uh, yeah, BBC Premier League. There was always Saturday evening. I was broadcasting in the Netherlands BBC, watching or Sunday morning. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, when they dropped down, like now, League One, we saw them last year in the, in the Irish pub. You know, losing was not fun, but I mean, it's always fun when when your team is winning. So this is nicer <laughs> than the Premier League and always looking and uh, and yeah. losers. Absolutely. But so how, how's how your you, hope when you win? You go up. Once. How do you follow the matches now? So what uh, your weekend? Because obviously, it's not easy to get a hold of some of the matches. No, 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 no. No, I I play football so, by myself. So it's Absolutely. always on the same time. So it's all mostly after the game. Uh, what's the score? What's the score? What's the score? Checking the highlights. And that usually yeah. comes to me because he doesn't carry his phone with him. <laughs> Nancy, Absolutely. what's the score? What's the score? <laughs> and now I get all the spam on my phone. Sutherland, Sutherland, Sutherland. <laughs> That's why I, I mean, know about Sutherland. Fun. You have fun. No, just no. joking. <laughs> <laughs> For you tomorrow, then, what's the? I know you've got the night tyranny planned out with the with the club. What's the match looking like for you? What's your predictions? What What do you want? What do you want to see happen? But what do you think is actually going to happen? Because that's normally One two different is, things. One is of course three points. Absolutely. I think last year we saw Portsmouth also hoping for a win. It's going to be a dead again. One one. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping for more. We're hoping, we're hoping for, for more. we're hoping for a win. Of course, we want to win. And they actually, they they did win four in a row. And then they they 
drew up, they drew one or did they lose so 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 now we need so now maybe they'll be back on their winning streak i mean yeah so we're exactly we, that. We, i like that logic we went yeah. on a good we went on a good run yes exactly. lost one so now it's time to go on another good run exactly, yeah, you, exactly. Had, you had a, it was kind of a wake-up call like they yeah, had a, a good run games, good run so. and then we're like kind of going yeah yeah this is good okay we're doing really well we're doing well and then it's like whoop the carpet comes out <laughs> and then they go shit okay now we really need to get back on the game here guys sometimes it helps so yeah, yeah. We had a, I have a saying, they need to stop um, neat kiking and mere spailing in Dutch. Yeah, it means it means yeah. less watching and more playing because you see a lot of players, they watch the ball on the football field and you're kind of like, no, no, no. That means you have to run to the ball, boys. More like, aggression. I mean, <laughs> more aggression. That, that's a phrase that could minutes. catch on around yeah, these yeah. parts, I feel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no watching, more playing. So what I'm hearing is, your mind's telling you it's going to be a 1-1 draw, but your heart's telling you... Of course, you hope for more. Yeah, That's exactly. why we're here. Exactly. Now, nah, but we have, we're all the weekend here, so this... Normally, I would plan a game a bit later in the season, hopefully, but yeah. this game up, and we thought we have to it's be It's a here. big game. Ipswich is a big it game. It is a big game. So I hope, I hope the atmosphere game. is up to scratch for you. I hope the result is more than up to scratch for you. But uh, We hope. We'll see. For thank all. You. For all. Definitely, definitely. But well, thank you very much for your time. It's been lovely speaking to you. Thank yeah. you for thank having you very us. Much. Yeah. Obviously, yes. enjoy the rest of your weekend. But okay, thanks. Thanks. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been a long evening. It's been well worthwhile. We've had, I, I mean, I'm not sure how many individual people have come on, but we've got just over two hours of recordings of, of fascinating stories, interesting people who have travelled from all corners of the globe just because they support Sunderland for whatever reason they've got. It's probably not a good enough reason to support Sunderland, but they've got one, and fair play to them for that. I, th I, th I think when you, we'll all, we'll all look back at this, you, you do actually just appreciate just actually how big Sunderland Football Club is. Not when you've got fans, like you said, with just the, the most kind of minor interest who've just developed this massive connection to our football club just because they like the shirt, just because they like the badge, and, and lo and behold, that, that's manifested into following the football club from the far ends of Europe. And I think what gets me is, and it was probably from personal experience, and it's hit home tonight, is I remember I was sat on a beach in the arse end of New Zealand somewhere, talking to our lass, and some bloke come up to me, he was from somewhere in Australia, recognised the accent, oh, who do you support, Sunland? He went, why? And I was like, well, just because. Just, it's just something you do. And everybody who we've spoke to tonight, they've got a reason. But if you boiled it down logically and went, well, you could have supported better teams, more exciting teams. Two guys from Malta, one of them was like, yeah, everybody in Malta takes the piss out of us because we support Sunderland. But we support them just because we do. And I think what resonates throughout this like, entire evening is everybody has their own personal connection to Sunderland, but we've all just got this like blanket reason, and it, it sounds cheesy to say, but it's like, well, just because the, there's been a connection somewhere, whether that's through dads, grandparents, you like the colour of the strip, you saw Kevin Phillips banging them in on Sky Sports on a Monday, and what, whatever it is, everyone's just like, well, that was the moment, and ever since, I just love them because I've got no logic, and I don't think many clubs in the world actually have that kind of reason that no, makes sense? I, I agree yeah we have an enormous pulling factor here and it's one of those areas where you hear an awful lot of people go ah, there's not a lot up there and footballers wives have you know shunned the idea of moving up here and stuff like that but we've had people from toronto sitting here we've had people from philadelphia sitting here and you know you think if it's good enough for you to, to kind of come over yeah, and be here yeah. I mean, this really is a special part of the world and it does get taken for granted an awful lot. The amount of money they've spent getting here as well. I know people who talk about they've spent like, not just hundreds, but thousands, thousands. of yeah. euros or whatever currency it is just to get the flights and the hotels and to stay here. So um, it's, it's like when just like we all say Sunderland fans will travel thousands of miles to watch the team. And then there's a group of people who we've met today who literally have traveled thousands of miles to watch Sunderland. And, uh, well, it's, you know, a lot of people... If you don't follow football, some people haven't heard of Sunderland from like down south and stuff. But then you've got these people who literally across the other side of the world. It's amazing, really, that they might have managed to get that far. I think as well, like speaking seriously, which is rare for us for a moment as well, but it, it kind of reiterates how much of a family Sunderland is. And again, it sounds cliche, but yes. everybody who's been in that room tonight, who's been in this room on the podcast, resonates across 
they can see across the entire room tonight is everybody's been welcome everybody's been talkative chatty it's been a hello with a smile that kind of thing but that isn't just because everybody's here tonight that is Sunderland AFC in a nutshell whether it's down the stadium of light whether you've gone to Portsmouth whether you're at Fleetwood on a Tuesday night whether you're watching this in Auckland Dubai Philadelphia wherever it's it is a, a family whether you're in person or whether you're on social media it is really really it's more connected than I thought I realized if that makes yeah. sense I'm back it's Gav again third time tonight I'm sat with Ant across the table yeah how we doing Ant yeah spot on it's been an Good. excellent night so far but hasn't it? never mind me and you we're sat with the legend that is George Forster Thank you very How much. are we doing, George? Well, I've, I've had a wonderful night, met so many friends, and it's lovely when you get people from all around the world. Never thought I'd ever see the day when we sort of all mixing up here together. Did, did you realise there were so many Sun fans across the world? I think so, but I I never, never, never thought that anybody would... I mean, you get the odd people when... When, when I was in the office coming from Canada and yeah. things like that, but not as a group. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. There's hundreds of people here tonight, isn't there? So, oh, I, I can't get over it, really. The organisation must have been tremendous. I mean, just, just coming past the door, there's some people just coming from Malta. Yeah, we'll you know that? Yeah. yeah. It shows how far Sunland goes, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it is. Yes, it, it, what hurts me now is we can't fill the stadium. You know, because probably could if they, if they all stop moving away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've got friends. When it comes to Christmas time, it's my biggest dread. And I get, I've got two in Australia: Malta, Gibraltar, Norway, Northern Ireland, uh, Southern Ireland, um, Holland. I'm trying to think. I've missed. I've missed. Oh, once somebody in uh, uh, Africa. Okay. Uh, yeah. But and it's, it's finding the time to do it all. Yeah. I'm, up till, I'm up till two in the morning. My daughter <laughs> don't want me to stop. I mean, I'm 93. Not that I'm whinging about that. No, uh, you've got to keep going. You've, you've got, got to, to keep, you've going. Got to keep going. I was uh, my job when I first started was uh, on the I uh, was on the on the original committee. Um, that was marvellous. A working class lad. All right. the rest were business people, you know, and. Uh, because I, saw, I worked at a David Brown's in, in Sunderland and of course they employed about 500 people and if they were got some pens in and, and the inboxes were gross, I, I went back with them and I had to get another box and the, the chairman, Stanley Lambert, was a great lad, Stanley. How long was I, he chairman for? It wasn't very long because no. he had a heart attack and then uh, we had just about four chairmen. I think I know more than that, All right. and um, so when I went, when I was Harold Howie, he he was a Ministry of Labour man. He only had one eye, bless him. And he said, "George has done a good job here." He, right, right. Tell him, told me, you're going to be the sales manager. I said, "Oh, hang on on a bit." I said, "I have no experience of sales other than." If you can pay six months for a pen and get a bob for it, you're doing all right, you know. But don't you worry, we'll buy, we'll buy stuff in. But when 1966 came, the World Cup, that's a story in itself. Yeah. Roker Park. It was poorly attended, you know. Was it? But, yeah, Who played that? at Roker Park? Can uh, you Chile, remember? Chile, Hungary, Italy. And the Russians, yes. that's the yeah, big yeah. one. When I didn't know the Russians only had about eight quid for a fortnight. That's why you rarely saw them in, in the in pubs. The pubs. <laughs> but uh, I know no, uh, Taylor, G George Taylor, worked for Chinese, I think. All right. George Taylor, he was coming out as I was going into the into was Sunderland there in the in the uh, university. He said, "What are you doing here?" I said, "I've got to." I said. Little John, my mate, is dead now. Like, but we went in. I had to take everything out the shop, you know, to sell to the Russians. They want to buy stuff. Look, I only took two and sixpence for a black cat key fob. The rest was all barter, swapping badges, vodka, caviar. Swapping. <laughs> I said the vodka so, again. But isn't it? I remember. Hey. I remember there the weren't the different sports people, you know, all right. from all around, around uh, wrestlers and all sorts. Anyway, we well, good Olympians, the Russians, but weren't they? They wanted to go <laughs> up on this lift. I'll not forget this story. 
We're going up in the little, my little pal. He said, George, I'm, said, I'm frightened. What about if they kill us? <laughs> I said, they won't touch us, man. Don't worry about that. So <laughs> went, lads from we, went, we went in this room and I've got, I've got a single bed and I just put the scarves on there, the hats, the badges uh, and uh, uh, pens. And I, I couldn't understand. This big Russian came over, I think he must have been a wrestler, came up and he grabbed a handful of pens. Now, I learned that a ruble was worth eight and fourpence, right? Anyway, he put, he, he put a load of badges down, and the only Russian I knew was Nyet, no, or something like that. <laughs> and there was a, a Russian there, they call him the clown, Kloon. And it, he's, he's, he gave us a bottle of, of vodka and got badges and stuff. I said, my missus will sell them, she were, worked in Wetherills, and the, it was just an experience, you know, but... The, Meeting all the different oh, people. That, yeah. The, the, the only bit about that was when I went to the bank with, a, with all the rubles, I didn't take any paper money in case it case was gone. <laughs> and I took these. He said, you'll have to go over to um, Cook's. Well, cross, they were off, I was at the road in Forster Street. Oh, I said, I'm trouble here. Now, trying to be paper money. So <laughs> what I did, my little pal, he, who used to take all the photographs down there then, he got a good idea. Let's mount them, you know. So we mounted them, we got them all. But then <laughs> all the badges went on string and stuff like that. But that's just one episode in my life. But uh, this, so what, how, how, have you, how have you found meeting all the different people oh, while you've been here tonight? Well, I'm in my element. I really am. Because yeah. I like people. I'm very few I'm, people I'm like I just you. like. Yeah, that's it. Very, very, I'm, I like them. I like all, people. All with one common interest yeah, yeah. in Sunderland, yeah. isn't it? But if you ask me who me favourite manager was, I think I liked, I liked Durban, I liked, um, I liked Durban. Dennis Durban, Smith, yeah. I liked Dennis Smith, mm -hmm. but in more recent times, I liked Di Canio. Really? We should, Paulo? We should have kept him, Paulo Di Canio, we should have kept him. I he was ruthless, him. wasn't he? Well, but why did the players go up and we Do you think he had them sussed, Mount George? Burns, Do you think eh? he had them sussed, like, Do you think he had the players oh, sussed? Oh, man. I mentioned this last yeah. week with Kieran Brady, I said, was that the start of the toxic thing in the club yeah, do you think that's what yeah. they should have let him that do was, what he wanted to do or well or Shane all the, the or Shane. crying the thing a bit of a bit of hard training wouldn't do them any wouldn't do them any harm would it no. you know but so, um, George, going back to obviously you've supported him all your life 93 years of age yeah, yeah. what's your greatest memories at the 1973 cup final oh, or I, have you got I, another one of that are you oh, slightly left field I, some of the cup run man I, I, got, cup run I, itself. I got I got to every game. Did you? I honestly did. I, I worked at David Brown's. As long as I worked on a Sunday, I could get off on a week I went I went when I went down to Redden and after the game, you know, because they had got a draw up here, because I had a goalkeeper called Death or Diaz, and uh, he went to go down there for the replay. And Charlie, after the game, Charlie came out onto the bus, right, cause he pulled up right outside the main entrance, and he he brought a bottle of champers. I don't think it went far in the bus, mind. Um, but um, and straight, I said, we'll have to get back to Sunderland. But the other, the two games, the two games were that uh, well, the game at uh, Sheffield, that was brilliant, taking on the mighty Arsenal, mm -hmm. and then. Then the, the great game, I think, was because I got to Manchester City where Mickey Oswell hid behind somebody. Probably the and, best game uh, ever played at Full Well Park, uh, God knew. Uh, a lot oh, of people were it was tremendous. <laughs> and my man, Vic Callum, oh, man, what a character he was. But, and Did you then, ever meet him? Vic Callum? What? what he came, Did you ever he meet Vic Callum? Oh, a few times. Well, he came, he came uh, into our office. He came from Hungary. He had, he had a bit of time. We had a time with me, and he was saying about the corruption, blah, 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 with Europe and all that. But uh, he was just a character. But when, you must remember when we were at Wembley, the, I remember thinking about Billy Hughes. He didn't yeah, come into me. Man. Billy Hughes, he, my, he was man of the match for me, Billy Hughes. But before the game, when they, went, when they were lining up, people don't realise he had one of these squeaky toys. You know, it's pretty toys, man. And every time I got, ee, 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 ee. And, oh. and they were, they couldn't hold, hold the laughter in, you know. That it was great. It, yeah. But the difference, I think, what happened here, Don Revy or Revy, whatever you want to call them, hey, they were all stiff and starchy. 
they were so, I was surprised how relaxed we were, you know? Mm. Well, it was, they were just tremendous. That's a secret though, isn't it? Oh, I don't, yeah. oh, don't it. feel the pressure, take it as it comes. Yeah, you know? I mean, I mean, the Billy, Billy Bremner, well, Porterville was telling me, he took a kick and he put a hole in his stocking. Right. You know what he did? <laughs> Tap him on the head and he said, you won't win it that way. He'd won. Yeah. He'd won the yeah, battle. Yeah. And that, that came, that, ah, oh, afterwards. We got invited down to the London branch at Harlow. And the bus back, oh, that, just tremendous. Some good that times. was a great game. Great games. I've seen some great games. Really a lot of great games. I couldn't have, you can't remember them all. <laughs> you know, so just, just to round off, George. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. What, what, what are you thinking about this season? How do you think we're going to do? Well, I think I think we've got the right man in charge. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's turned the corner. You want to think on here, very little money. It's, yes. But mm. he, he knows his football. Would you have thought after ever... Boxer Day would have got married within the month yesterday? Yes, I'm chuffed yeah. a bit about wow. that. Crack and won it. And I, I, hope, I, hope he gets, I hope he gets a clap tomorrow. Right. I do. I think he will. After on Boxing Day, me like a lot of fans, I was ready to see some change. But he's he's turned it around. He's turned it around. Yes. I mean, look, it's like you. If you went in a new job, what, what would, here you would have to be shown how to do it, and it would take, it. Yeah, yeah, take yeah. time to settle down, wouldn't it? But you know, he's turned the corner, and uh, I just like him. I just think, I think there's a bit of a lack of a patience in football now, George. Whereas, oh. like managers, got. Maybe one, two, three year to get their style of football across, whereas now that's it's right. three that's or four months. That's right. You, know, you, managers you can, you can so do it. I, I just wish, and this is a big wish, I tell you what, I, when that big lottery thing came on, was one and two, I forget how many million I said. Over 100 George, million euro George, million I would love you to own that because I didn't want it for myself. That would have gone to Sunday Football Club. Oh, yes. And I mean it. You know, and. Uh, By the club. By the club, but I would, have, I would have to have somebody to run it. I mean, I've, I've no really experience like that. I, I wouldn't. I, <laughs> Me and Gavin and do I, a good job for and, you. And I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't, wouldn't want to change house where I live either. No. I just live in a flat that's good enough for me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to buy a, a big and great big mansion. You've got, but, uh, you've got to, yeah, it's got yeah, to be stay you know true what? to your roots. I used to look, when, going away on the bus, because I've been in the army, you know, you get these army songs and that. I used to love to sing them, entertain them on the bus. Can you sign us off with the song then? Uh, Aye. Right. Can we finish oh, with the song? Aye. Eh? How are they? Let's hear a song from you. <laughs> right. It's, it's a sad one, really. It's, it's about I couldn't get a ticket for the game. Ten lads dressed in red. One lad wearing green. Up for the cup in London town. That's where I long to be. But I couldn't get a ticket for the game. To see it on the tell is not the same. All the lads and lasses, they were leaving at the station. I couldn't get a ticket for the game. As I laid in my bed, I could lie and dream. Dream a dream of a Sunderland boy, just thinking of the team. But I couldn't get a ticket for the game To see it on the telly's not the same All the lads and lasses they were leaving at the station But I couldn't get a ticket for the game Ten lads dressed in red One lad wearing green They climbed the steps and they took the cup for Bob for them and me I couldn't get a ticket for the game but Sunderlanders won it just the same all the lads and lasses they were dancing at the station I couldn't get a ticket for the game no I couldn't get a ticket for the game <laughs> love it George I, I think it deserves a round of applause well done George thank you what a great way to finish thank you George thank you very much George cheers thank you George thank you